Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel. I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. Today we are going to fly the Eurowings A320 on a schedule as you would expect it in a real-life airline. And in particular this means we've planned our route today to fly from Dusseldorf to London Heathrow, back to Dusseldorf and then to Copenhagen and back, making a total of four sectors. I've put the expected routing, or rather the expected timetable, down into the video description below so you can see when we expect to go where. However, the first thing we are going to do for the day is going to be to actually plan our flight. And with that I mean we are going to plan all four of them. So let's bring up SimBrief and start with it. Now, basically I'm just going to program the schedules that we have planned for in the um, video description below. So that is what we're going to base those flight plans on today. And, um, well, that is pretty much the idea. Now, I'm also going to show you here how to plan all four flights, and um, then we can eventually shift everything around as, it see, as we see fit. However, we start with a little setback already, in that somebody is currently using the um, call sign that we have found previously. In other words, we need to find a different call sign for the very first flight already. Now, luckily, that stuff is rather easy to do using Flight Radar 24, as you can see me doing right now. So, um, here we go for another one here. That's Eurowings 5 Tango Foxtrot, so we'll just about have to use that right now. Little drawback over here, but I kind of expected something like that to happen. It usually does when you publish the call signs you want to use in advance, and then always somebody chimes in to think like, hey, it's a good idea to block those call signs. Anyway, first of all, welcome to everybody in, in the chat. Metal Eye, very nice to see you here. And Kevin as well, of course. And of course, everybody else as well. So as you can see, this is basically how I'm gathering my flight information here. We are now the Eurowings 9 Tango Foxtrot, and um, we can start setting up our flight like this. So... Eurowings, I'm still going to use the flight number that we had originally planned, because the schedule makes uh, pretty much sense like this. So we're going to be the 9464. And we'll fly from Dusseldorf towards uh, London Heathrow. Alternate is going to be determined automatically, and in our airframe today is going to be the Delta Alpha Bravo Hotel Golf, which is a former Air Berlin A320 that's now flying for Eurowings. ATC calls, and as we said, Eurowings 5 Tango Foxtrot. Okay, schedule block time. Let's not take too much over there. I planned with an hour and ten, and that should be sufficient for the flight. Passengers will carry 150 over, and for the freight, we'll have 450 kilograms in the main holds. The rest of it, we'll let it determine automatically, and looking at the planned route of the flight over there versus the um, actual route of flight, that actually looks quite similar, so we'll just keep it along the uh, sim brief routing. And I would say that looks pretty alright, so let's go ahead and generate that flight. Okay, here we go, 57 minutes airtime, and the general flight plan here looks like it makes sense. But I'm just going to do a quick change over here. I've still set it to the default Ryanair layout, but since we're flying a Lufthansa Group airline today, let's actually go ahead and use the Lufthansa layout. Okay, try that once more. Generate flight plan, please. And that looks good to me. Okay, so that's going to be this flight. Then let's quickly go ahead and plan the remainder of the flights for the day as well. And we'll start over here as Eurowings uh, 9465 this time from London Heathrow towards Dusseldorf. And the airframe is going to be the same that we are bringing over, of course. By the way, if you find that cell call funny over here, Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta, that's actually what the uh, real plane seems to have. Okay, scheduled flight length is going to be an hour and uh, five. We'll just let the runways be runways. 
passengers. We're gonna carry a little bit less on the way back. 130 and uh, 200 kilograms of cargo. The routing looks pretty much correct versus the um, real flight. Where do we have it? Here it is. Going up a little bit down to the north. So that's pretty much this routing. Looks good to me. So we're going to keep that and we'll generate the flight with this. Once we're done generating all the four flights, we can then basically load them up again. Okay, only one mistake there, which is the departure time. The schedule is going to be 16.35. Always a good idea to review those flights before you release them. So 16 and 35 Zulu, apply that. And as alternate, we won't take Frankfurt, but instead we will be using Dortmund. ATC call sign, Eurowings 7, Papa Yankee. And I'm taking bets now if any of the call signs we are currently generating is actually going to be available later on today. Personally, I say no. Somebody will take all of our call signs. Okay, that's number two ready and generated. Let's go ahead and plan number three. And like that, we can basically already do the entire pre-flight preparation so that later on when we fly the flights we actually get a bit of uh, time available. So this one is going to take us from Düsseldorf towards Copenhagen and the alternate is going to be automatically determined. Take the plane from the list. What's Copenhagen? Let's actually make it full. 161 and we're going to take 500 kilos of cargo. For the rest of it, departure time is planned at 1800. Yes. And finally, that's going to be 1 hour and 20. So, the route is looking pretty good. That's a Eurocontrol verified route as well. So, we're going to leave it at that. Generate the flight, please. And then we're going to do one last one. And Timio, welcome as an economy class member in my channel. Thank you very much for joining, my friend. Okay, so this flight plan actually looks quite good. Did we forget anything? Yes, the call sign once again. So this one is going to be the Eurowings 8 November. Once again, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody is going to take the call sign. And like that, when pilots get to the airplane in uh, real life, or rather when we report for duty, we would pretty much do the same here, and that we're going to review all the different flights that we plan to do on the day. And that is pretty much exactly what we are doing right here. So the start of a typical day in an airline pilot's life is basically always by doing paperwork. What else? And that is, by the way, not only in Germany, seeing that I'm German, one might easily get to think that, well, it's always only those Germans doing that stuff. No, that is actually what it works like in pretty much any airline. Okay, so, and that departure time looks good. Yes, happy with that. And the scheduled block time is once again going to be 1 hour and 20. And we won't have too many passengers on the way back. 97, 120 kilos freight, and that's going to be it. Okay, the routing is once again a Eurocontrol verified route, so we don't need to do anything with that. We can keep it like it is, and that looks good to me. Finally, the call sign, of course, once again, Eurowings 36 November Mike. Generate that flight, and that should be it then. Okay, looks good to me. We're going to keep it like this. Then let's go ahead and take our saved flights, load up the latest that we've generated, Dusseldorf towards Heathrow, and we'll take the latest release, which is this one. View the flight. Okay, free file on VATSIM. And like that, we should be fully prepared to go now. Okay, five tango fox, all of that looks pretty well. Flight plan pre filed.
Okay, very nice. The only one thing that I'm still going to do with this is I'll just hit the um, generate flight button once again because otherwise it would um, not be loadable from the Phoenix. ATC Swede, hello there to Sweden. Gothenburg, isn't it? Okay, so now we're pretty much all set. And like that, we um, are ready to go. So let's get rid of the uh, planning window up here and let's get our, make our way towards the airplane. We'll start doing a quick walk around and just a quick check, making sure real time and real weather are active, which they are. And that is it. So we're going to start this one with a little walk around, making sure that our Airbus is actually fit for duty. The probes are looking good. Nose wheel. I wonder if that right, red light there. Oh yeah, parking. Parking brake. That is hopefully set at the moment. Front wheel is looking good. The um, probes are good as well. Static ports good. No visible damages. Pan blades are looking good. And since we are flying an Airbus today, make better damn sure that the cowling is latched down there. Otherwise, I'm sure that you all have seen those lovely videos of Airbus cowlings flying away. Okay, the static discharges are all here, the wing is looking good. Making our way towards the main gear. Tires are looking good, no damage is visible. And the same on the other end side, landing gear doors looking good as well. Okay, off to the back of the plane, outflow valve, no damages, leading edge of the stabilizer is good. We've got the static wick dischargers on there. And then let's go on to the tail skid and the APU cone, all of them looking good. No visible damages over here. Elevator on this side is good. And then we'll go ahead and check the main landing gear on this side. Looking good, no damages. Oops, that's an engine. The tailplane is looking good as well. Static wick dischargers are all in place. Position lights are still off because the airplane hasn't been powered up yet. But that is alright. The engines themselves are looking good, everything latched down here as well, so our cowlings aren't going to fly away. And the fan blades are all looking good, no visible damages, no damage on the spinner either. Leading edge is alright, and the lights are alright as well. Okay, that's the walk around completed, then we can head over into the flight deck. And we're going to start today with the first officer as pilot flying. We are going to do basically what um, we do in my airline all the time, which is the, if you have a four sector day, the first officer is going to fly the first two sec uh, sorry, is going to fly the sector number one and number four, and the captain is going to fly the numbers two and three. So that's the uh, basic plan for today as well. Keeping it as realistic as possible. Okay, but for now let's go ahead and power up our airbus. External power on, battery voltage is greater than 25.5, so we can power the batteries up. And then basically we're going to give this thing its time, and in the meantime we are going to set up the EFB. So, tap to import flight. And here we are, scheduled off block in 18 minutes, that looks quite good to me. Then let's have a very quick look into the uh, destination weather, make sure that that is fine. And that's pretty much looking good, so let's have a quick check of the flight plan. Okay, so this is the Lufthansa layout, that's probably the closest we're going to get to the real-life Eurowings, seeing that Eurowings is a Lufthansa Group airline. So, destination Heathrow is definitely going to be runway 27, and the weather forecast is looking, well, British, rainy, but apart from that good, and the same goes for our alternate Manchester, so I don't see any reason for extra fuel. 
So if we go down and check this, plum takeoff 5.2, 200 kilos taxi 5.4, and I don't see any reason to take more fuel than that. Well, it's Heathrow, maybe a bit of holding fuel. Yeah, let's take around in the holding, 500 extra is 200 kilos, so let's take 5.6 tons of fuel. So, mass and balance, plant fuel 5.6. Okay, load aircraft, you may do that in fast time. Very well. Okay, those are expected cautions. We're going to cancel them out. Then let's go ahead and start our pre flight. Oxygen on, flight recorder on, CVR test, first flight of the day only, which this is for us. IRSs can go on, emergency lights armed, no smoking, auto. We're gonna wait until the refueling is complete before we start. Uh, before we turn the seatbelts on. Lights to auto. We have 150 passengers, so we can use the pack flow selector in low today. Fuel pumps remain off until the refueling is in progress. Let's go ahead and do the fire tests. And in one fire. And the fire light is illuminated as well. Very good. APU. Same over here. Very good. And finally, engine number two. Very good. Quick initial setup of the FCU over here. What's the QNH again today? This will do off 1005, okay. 1005 and 100. And it might be a good idea to turn on the synchronization of the left and right sides. And if we're on it already, we might as well tell the plane that we're flying from the FO seat. Okay, first officer linked. Very good. Then, we have sufficient oil quantity for the day, we have sufficient hydraulic quantities for the day. Oxygen pressure is looking good as well. What do we have on the status page over there? Auto pilot in up, auto throttle in up, that's expected at the moment. Okay. Guard frequency on the right side there. And then we'll take Unicom on the left side. And to make our life easier, I'm going to keep the number one radio active on the right hand side console over here. Not exactly how you're supposed to uh, how you're supposed to do it, but in real life you just lean over and dial in the radio. In the sim that's a bit more difficult, so that's the reason I'm going to do it that way. So refueling is complete, 5.6 tons on board. Fast mills on. Fuel pumps on. So, to the best of my knowledge, I'm doing things as close as possible to the correct Airbus SOP, but if anybody notices something that is actually off, then you are very welcome to tell me. Okay, we're going to start on the ATSU. AOC menu, flight initialization, data request. And here we have it, Eurowings 5 Tango Fox, Düsseldorf to Heathrow, Auckland, Manchester, 57 minutes, looking good. Then data, aircraft status, we're in a 320-200 with CFM engines, the database is current, zero factors, okay. In it, we are just going to request the stuff, and then we'll be Eurowings 5 Tango Fox. Quick check on the IRS init page. 
What's quite important here, something that I always did wrong when I flew the Airbus previously, but I started reading a bit of Airbus FCOM these days, and um, what's really important here is um, that you do not press the Align on Reference button. If you press this, it's basically going to align the IRS onto the airport reference point, which is typically not at your gate. But if you don't press any of this and simply wait until the IRS has aligned itself, then as it reads over here, it's currently aligning on the GPS position already. So don't press this and then it aligns on the GPS position. Press the alignment button and it's going to align on the airport reference position or whatever you've dialed in up here. So important thing there to keep in mind. Okay, cost in X20, planned at flight level. Let's see what we've got there. 320. Wind data, we can request that. Then flight plan, Düsseldorf, departure, 2 3 left. What do we have today? Model 1 Tango and Logan 2 Hotel. So oh, we take the module 1 Tango and then for the arrival let's take the ILS 27 left, Logan 2 Hotel arrival if we can find it, there it is, and the Lambon transition, here we go. Okay, insert that, RATNAV, let's have a look into the charts but should be fairly straightforward. This one. Import from Simbrief, please. This sort of ground chart. We'll need the airport and the parking stands. And then for the departure chart, we set enough stuff. Where is it? Here we go. Module 1 Tango departure. And do we have a conventional backup of that as well? Probably not really, as far as I know. This one is um, mostly on off. Yep. We can go straight at 3.3 DUS. So let's tune Düsseldorf VOR both sides. And then we can use Delta Yankee for track keeping initially. Okay, Delta Yankee both sides. This is still going to come, but for now let's enter the departure runway, Dusseldorf 23 left. Nothing on the perf in it yet, that comes later. Secondary flight plan, we can prepare the emergency procedures and the engine out sit is going to be straight ahead to um, 6 miles from Dusseldorf VOR on the runway track, then to Lima NDB and hold. Holding will be 232 with a right hand turn, climbing to an altitude of 3000 versus an MSA of, uh, three, uh, of 2800. And from there, I'm going to set up a quick return for an ILS approach from May 23 left. Okay, then we can put the performance in, and we should hopefully have gotten a preliminary load sheet by now. Yep, Telex. Ignoring that, low cheat, that's what we want. 58.6. And as the, here we go. Zero fuel CG31. We've ordered 5.6 tons of fuel. And the last thing then, takeoff weight 64 tons. Comparing that with here looks good, except this. Okay, um, that's that part. Alternate fuel is the last one I want to enter because I know on a couple of my last live streams you guys said that I don't need to enter it, the Airbus would calculate it. But nonetheless, I found that the Airbus always calculates a value that is much too small. Like it typically calculates like 200 kilos of fuel for a diversion of like an hour or something and um, well, honestly, that is something that is uh, definitely too little. Okay, we can click away all those messages here. They all make sense. Then, takeoff data calculation. Düsseldorf, 
two, three left, dry, synchronize load sheet, synchronize weather, and we'll take intersection Lima 3 data. So that in case ATC offers it, we have it. So flap one, down trim point one at 61 degrees. One slash zero point one down and sixty one degrees with takeoff speeds one thirty three, one forty, one forty. Okay. And finally, it's noise abatement number two, so we're going to accelerate at one thousand one hundred and forty. GPS primary is checked, and that looks good as well over here. Okay, perfect. So with that, we are pretty much set up for the um, flight, so we can go ahead with the departure briefing. I don't see any particular threats for this one, so um, let's go ahead with the FMC. We are going from Düsseldorf to Heathrow, Eurowings 5, Tango Fox, cost index 20, flight level 320. We are currently parking on stand Alpha 11. As far as I could see in the pre-flight, that was the real-life stand that we had. Uh, or that this flight had. So, Alpha 11 is down here, push back most likely onto Tango, then taxi via Papa 2, Mike, and we'll take intersection Lima 3 figures up here, and then we have all the intersections available. For the takeoff, we have calculated the flap 1 takeoff, down trim point 1, 61 degrees flex temperature, speeds 133, 140, 140, and noise abatement procedure number 2. The departure now is going to be the Modru 1 Tango departure, and we have that on a chart over here. The routing straight at 229 until Delta Lima 243, maximum 210 knots. Let's check that in here as well. So that's 600 feet, then Delta Lima 243, speed 210. From there it's going to be a right hand turn towards Uboro, which is an overfly waypoint, 11.4 miles. And in here we have Uboro as an overfly waypoint. Then it's a left hand turn to Natex, maximum speed 250 knots, and we have Natex with a speed of 250 knots in here, and thereafter we proceed towards Modru above flight level 210, and in here we have Modru above level 210. Okay, that's the um, departure briefing complete. For the emergencies, above 80 knots we'll only stop for fire. Engine failure, predictive windshield warning, or if the aircraft is unable or unsafe to fly, we're going to use standard Airbus reject procedures, which, if I'm totally honest, I'm not 100% familiar with, so we'll just keep it at that for the emergencies. For the emergency SIT, if we need to, we've got it pre-programmed on the secondary flight plan, and that's basically what we have over here straight at to 6 miles from uh, Düsseldorf VOR, and we'll actually make that an overfly point, so straight at 6 miles from Düsseldorf and then a right turn towards Lima NDB, pick up the hold, MSA 2800 and we are going to climb 3000 feet. Any questions? Probably not. Very good. Okay, starting APU. And let's quickly say hello to the passengers as well. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon from the flight deck. This is your uh, captain speaking. My name is Emmanuel, and in the name of Eurowings, you're welcome aboard our flight towards London Heathrow. Flight time today, about 55 minutes. We expect an on-time arrival and a smooth trip at 32,000 feet. Thank you very much for joining. Sit back, relax, enjoy the flight with us. And if there is anything we can do for you to make it more comfortable, please don't hesitate to ask any of our charming cabin crew members. Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, einen schönen guten Tag aus dem Cockpit. Hier spricht Ihr Co-Pilot. Mein Name ist Emanuel. Im Namen der Eurowings sind Sie ganz herzlich willkommen an Bord unseres Fluges nach Düsseldorf, Flug, äh, nach London. Flugzeit heute etwa 55 Minuten mit einem ruhigen Flug in 32.000 Fuß. Wir bedanken uns an der Stelle herzlich, dass Sie unsere Gäste sind, wünschen Ihnen schönen Aufenthalt bei uns an Bord. Und wenn es irgendetwas gibt, womit wir Ihnen diesen schöner gestalten können, zögern Sie nicht, sich an unsere Flugbegleiter zu wenden. Vielen Dank für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit. Okay. So that's this. We don't have any ATC online at the moment, so we'll just assume the ATC clearance is received for what we have planned. Then we have received a load sheet which is in compliance with edition number one, so we can simply go ahead, accept this, and personally, 
I like to cross check and uh, type it in nonetheless, but we wouldn't have to. If it says the load sheet is in compliant, uh, is in compliance, then you don't need to um, type any of the new load sheet numbers in there. Okay, um, zero fuel weight CG thirty point six. In here, five point six tons, and that looks good to me. Takeoff weight sixty three point nine. And in here we have 64.0, 150 passengers plus one baby. Okay, then let's get our pushback. APU is showing available, very good. Handling by AHS. And the ground equipment may be removed now. Okay. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. Then, cockpit preparation checklist. Gear pins and covers removed. Fuel quantity 5,600 kilograms. Seat belts on. ADIRS. We actually checked this on the FMS over here, showing NAV. And Barrel Rev 1005 set reading 140. Cross checked. Cockpit preparation checklist complete. Okay, then we're just waiting for GSX, and then we can go and push. On to Unicom up here. Okay, B4 start checklist. Parking brake, set, takeoff speeds, and thrust. We've got 133, 140, 140, 61 degrees flex temperature. Set windows, showing the rat over here, number one and number two. Closed beacon on the four star check is complete. Result of traffic, Eurowings 5 Tango Foxtrot, gate Alpha 1 1 pushing back onto Tango. Okay, facing northeast on Tango, that looks good. Let's see the traffic behind. Looking good, nobody there. Okay, park and brake off. 06, yeah, we call it 05 on time. Then we don't have to write down any delay codes. Okay, and with that, we are basically on the way. Okay, the pushback might take a little while, so I'm just delaying the engine start for now. No need to waste any um, no need to waste any fuel here. Oh yeah, company's pushing over there as well. And Lawn, so um, do I only fly the 737 in real life? Yes, I do, for now at least. Soon it will be the Airbus. Okay, starting engine number two. Waiting for the um, duck pressure to rise over here. 
And starting number two. Okay, park brake set. What's that? Start lever full. Start full. Oh yeah. Now they are at idle, and now they can start up. Okay, the starter is out, and then starting engine number one. Tow truck disconnected. Light has been removed. Left is clear, right is clear. Okay, stand by please. Okay, two good starts, clear disconnect, clear signal on the right side with a pin and have a good day, bye bye. Okay, that's quite a bit of traffic on Unicom here. I'll put them onto the um, headset. Okay, so that's the hand signal received down there. Flight control track. Full up. Full down. Neutral. Full left. Full right. Neutral. And the rudders, please. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Okay, after start checklist. Anti eyes. Off. Ecom status. Checked. Pitch trim. That's 29% uh, set. Rudder trim. Neutral. After start checklist complete. Sort of traffic, all wings, five tango fox, I take solo point from a two to the left and we'll have a look out for the other traffic. Okay, let's go. Clear on the right. Brakes check. Pressure zero. Okay, let's expedite a little, then we can be number one in front of the Chewie. But that should be fine now. Okay, quick takeoff review. Right seat takeoff, from here 2, 3 left, flaps 1, noise abatement procedure 2, takeoff speeds 133, 140, 140, flex temperature 61. The sit initially straight ahead, then a right turn out. And we have an initial speed restriction there, so we'll um, have to be a little bit careful then not to exceed that. We might have to take the flaps out for a little bit longer. Emergencies, we go straight ahead to 6 miles, and then it's going to be a right hand turn. To Lima NDB, climbing altitude 5,000, uh, sorry, 3,000 feet. On the normal sit, it's going to be 5,000 feet, and we are on the departure frequency already. And that should pretty much be it. Let's do the, um, oh, what's that? Okay, let's go ahead with the taxi checklist. Flight controls checked, flaps, config 1 plus F, radar and predictive windshear system, 
Oh yeah, we should have done this first. Okay, radar and predictive wind shear system on and auto, engine mode selector, normal, and ECAM memo, takeoff no blue, before takeoff checklist complete. Sorry, taxi checklist complete. Oh boy, I'm still in my Boeing terms. So that guy is taking Lima 3 over there. Nobody on the T-cast, then we'll just go Lima 2, something the likes. Of traffic, Euro Wings 510 Fox truck behind the departing company A320 via Lima 2, lining up from A23 left behind. I'm not going for Lima 3 intersection right now because we still need to assure wake turbulence separation. And um, if he's just about starting his takeoff run now, then we'll just take the next one to the left and then we should be able to commence our takeoff roll immediately once we are on the runway without having to wait for the um, other guy. There's one coming in on the final, but seven miles out, that's not going to be a problem for us. Cabin crew, please take your seats for departure. Line up checklist, take off from a two, three left. Tikas Tara packs off, line up checklist complete. Okay, by the time we are lined up with the runway, the other guy will be so far away that um, we can then take off straight away. The lights are on. Let's start the timing. Hey, take off. Stabilized. Uh, Man flag 61, SS Ramey, all of the first blue. One hundred knots. You one, rotate. Gear up, positive freight. After the drop traffic, we just quickly click the hoarding knot on my two thriller. We will line up behind the landing head of the bell. Cross climb, auto throttle. Back one on. Okay, speed limit 210. Let's see, clean speed 213. Yeah, then we're just going to clean it up. Clap zero. Back two on. Okay, there is no more after takeoff checklist. So for now, we are pretty much done with whatever we had to do.
Funny how the Phoenix still commands me to fly the magenta bug instead of the green dot speed, even though the flaps are retracted. Definitely shouldn't do that. Okay, is that standard? Standard set, passing flight level 54, climbing flight level 24. Autopilot on. Okay, so flight number one is on the way. Next guy's already taking off over there. One guy's just landed as well. Not sure if you can see that on the uh, small side of the screen. And Sub-Zero, when do you start your Airbus type rating, if you haven't already? Uh, that's going to be at some point in um, June or July. Okay, approach level 100, but we are still limited to 250 knots, but let's do the uh, 10 checks nonetheless. We'll keep the passengers... Yeah, let's keep him seated for now. Might still get a little bit turbulent. So we'll just take it on the safe side here. Then, clearing the ratnav page. We can copy the... Um, Primary flight plan to the secondary, overriding the emergencies. Plan flight level 320, optimum 360. So let's remain at 320. Then we don't get a, like, entirely long cruise. Or entirely short cruise, I should say. And once we've completed the next turn, we'll probably get the passengers out. For now, I'm just keeping the uh, passengers in because looking outside, um, if we fly into something like these clouds over here, it could get a little bit bumpy, so I prefer to keep the passengers seated for now, and then we'll eventually get them released as soon as um, as soon as we know that it's going to be uh, nice and smooth. So, our uh, routing over here, if we look at the different country codes, we have Holland on the right and then Belgium on the left. Basically, once it is assured that we can stay within Belgium airspace, which is basically roundabout at Modru, we can make a right-hand turn towards uh, Dinat or Kegget or something the likes. And um, that is normally the kind of direct that air traffic control gives you, flying in areas like these. Okay, and that's getting a little bit bright there for my taste. Engine anti ice on. Okay, that shouldn't. Those clouds over there only look like a small layer. I don't think that that's going to cause any more turbulence. No, that should be. Fairly smooth. Let's release the passengers. Okay, climbing flight level 320, which is going to be final for the day. And let's see, if we take the direct towards DNAT now, is that going to keep us inside Belgian airspace? Yeah, that looks like it. Okay. Direct to insert, and let's take the shortcut. Now comes the interesting look. Let's see the um, 
Andrew Chart. Yeah, over here, yeah. So we'll overfly a little bit of Holland over here. And then we're basically heading down here to D-Nut. But that bit of Holland here is fine. Only this is the part we shouldn't overfly. Alright, at that point the captain would probably like to have those sun, sun trades here as well, and with that there's not much more to do for us. Top of descent is already coming in at the end of the nav display, and we are clear of any icing for now, engine anti-ice off. Alright. An interesting question in the comment there from somebody with a Cyrillic name, my apologies for not being able to pronounce it right, is Navigraph and Simbrief better than your software in real life? Um, no, absolutely not. So, uh, of course the real life dispatching software is still way more advanced than the stuff we have available in um, Simbrief. For example, well, let's talk about Navigraph here because I can show you that right now in flight. Um, the software we're using in real life basically is also sorted like this but when you go over to the um, pinned charts they basically show sort well sorted over here you know um, just a little bit of um, that's just a little uh, quality of life improvement of course but you know um, really makes your life a lot easier. And then looking into the software that is used um, for flight planning, my airline uses the Lido system for that, and the Lido system is still way more advanced than the uh, Simbrief system is. But I would kind of expect that from a multi-million dollar software compared to, well, Simbrief. Don't get me wrong there, Simbrief is still doing a very, very good job at, um, you know, at pretty much anything that we can use for private flight simulation and as said don't get me wrong there you know um that private flight simulation stuff is really really good by now but still compared to real life dispatching software just an example when my airline um calculates flight plans they always take atc altitude constraints into consideration so for example if we were calculating with the um, Logan 2 hotel arrival, as we have it available over here, we have the Logan level 250 restriction, Sabre level 160, Lumborn flight level 70. Now, if we compare that to the flight plan that Simbrief has generated for us, then we will see that Simbrief basically calculates one flight level for the entire flight. So, basically, Simbrief always assumes that you're going to do a continuous climb to the top of climb and a continuous descent from your last cruising level. And the only en route altitude restrictions that Simbrief takes into account are, for example, restrictions because the airway might not be available at a higher altitude. So if we had some low altitude airways on here, it would calculate the step descent to the lower altitude. But it will not take into account, for example, restrictions from the sit or from the star. That is especially a thing going out of England with all those very low altitude restrictions that you have for the first 50 miles or something. And that is something that Simbrief simply doesn't take into account. So that is one example of how the real-life software from the airlines is better than the freeware stuff we have available in Flight Simulator. And Sub-Zero, okay, I see what you mean. Real-life software is much more advanced, but I still think the iPad in Phoenix and uh, the software is more intuitive and nice to use. Um, well, the uh, Phoenix software certainly is nice to use, that's true. Now, 
I can't really compare this to any real-life Airbus stuff. If I compare it to the real-life Boeing stuff that we are using in my airline, then it is actually quite good, yes. I would say the, um, especially the takeoff and landing performance calculators in the Phoenix, I would say they are on the same level as the stuff that we are using in the uh, Boeing in real life. And Matthias, uh, hello there. What is the best checklist for the PMDG 737-800 and where can I find it? Um, I would say go on Google and search for a 737 quick reference handbook. I believe there is one from Thomson Airways or something like that available. And that one actually has the normal checklists included somewhere at the front of the QRH. And I would say those are the best checklists you can find simply because they are real life Boeing checklists. Apart from that, different operators are using different checklists. For example, the one in my airline is totally different from the one you are going to find on Google. And um, all of them have their reason. You know, my airline is doing a lot of flights with rather inexperienced pilots, so naturally they go ahead and cover a lot more stuff on the checklists than other airlines would. And um, that totally makes sense for the operation that we do. In other airlines, that might not make sense, so they're using a less complicated checklist. And my friend with a Cyrillic name, these clouds look nice. Yeah, they really do. The clouds are something in Microsoft Flight Simulator that really catches me. Like, they are still too big, so mostly in real life you find a lot more, but smaller clouds. However, the overall impression you get is really good. It doesn't give you that sense of altitude that you have in real life, but I guess if they just reduced the uh, cloud size to what you would have in real life, the entire thing would be a lot more performance hungry. And I would say they found a good compromise there between the complexity of the weather scenarios displayed and the simulator's performance. So overall, I'm quite happy with what they've done there. And Sub-Zero, how long have you been flying 737 driver, if that isn't too personal? Uh, I've been flying the 737 for five years now. And thank you very much for the very nice words. You sound like you are a captain in real life, lol, just from your voice and from the knowledge in your other videos. Well, actually, I'm a first officer. I'm actually a first officer. And I've flown the 73 for um, five years now. And, uh, yeah. Apart from that, I worked in flight simulation prior to that and, you know, um, when you really put in effort into the training and put in effort into studying, then I would say gaining the level of knowledge is um, something I would expect somebody who's flown on the airlines for five years certainly to be able to do. Okay, so let's take another shortcut. Kegit is always a good point on this route. We'll take the beam points and insert. So, only about 100 miles to the descent. Let's go ahead and see if we have any destination weather available already. Ooh, there actually is an ATIS available. In other words, there is ATC online. Oh, heater information x-ray. Arrival runway 27 right, departure 27 left, transition level 75. Service wind 280 at 11, 10 kilometers, scattered 3400, overcast 4600, temperature 8, U.4, QNH 1003. Okay, so landing runway 27 right then. So at this point I would hand over controls to the um, captain. And then I would start doing my arrival setup. So let's go ahead and do that real quick here. Pant Magoo, has it finally happened? A320 driver now. Well, it will be A330 driver in, 
eventually. Not A320. It will be the A330. But apart from that, it is happening, yes. In summer. In summer. Until then, I'm going to enjoy my last couple of months on the 7.3. Okay, no radio setup. Well, yeah, we can use London VR over there. So, 274 knots should be good. Let's have a quick look onto the star chart, see if there is any recommended speed on there. On airports like this, there often is. But, looking at this, I can't actually find any recommended speed. Might be in the general charts. So, let's quickly check that as well. Airport briefing, arrival. Speed restrictions. That is only initial approach. Nothing for the end route segment. Okay, it doesn't look like there is anything for the end route segment published there. Maybe on that page. Yeah, C CDA approach should be conducted. We aim to do that anyway. Minimum runway occupancy, we do that anyway. That might be interesting. Runway vacation guidelines. Aircraft lands but cannot contact Heathrow ground due to a radio frequency congestion. In this case, pilots should completely vacate the landing room and taxi into the first taxiway available. The pilot should then hold position until the contact with ground can be established. Okay. Land after procedure. That might be interesting for us as well. Normally only one aircraft is permitted to land or take off on the runway in use at any one time. However, when traffic sequence is two successive landing aircraft, the, la the second one may be allowed to land before the first one has vacated the runway in use. Provided the runway is long enough, there is no evidence to indicate that braking may be adversely affected. It is daylight, the first landing aircraft is not required to backtrack, and the second aircraft will be able to see the first aircraft clearly and continue until it has vacated the runway. Okay, so that's something that we're going to keep in mind for the arrival that we are allowed to land if we see the preceding aircraft and the preceding is still on the runway. Okay, so we're gonna keep that one in mind. We don't need to see, change the descent speed, that's what I understood already. Then quick look into the ATIS once more. And we have transition level 75, 280 at 10. So 75280 at 10. Oh, it should have been at 11, okay. Uh, temperature 81003. Okay, we're going to do a config free approach here. Landing the runway is definitely long enough, so we can go ahead and save that fuel. And then the minimums for this one is gonna be 277, okay. Fuel prediction, 16 minutes extra, very nice. Pretty much what we wanted. And the secondary flight plan, we have 27 left in here. And we're going to keep that in. Okay. So that should be the setup. Then let's calculate some landing performance as well. Heathrow 27 right. It is a dry runway. Let's take the latest meta over here. Landing weight, so estimated fuel about three tons. That means we're going to burn a thousand kilos, so sixty-one point five is going to be our landing weight. 615, low auto brake, idle reverse, manual thrust, flap 3, 2184 meters. And let's quickly see, that's pretty much, um, that should be halfway down the runway, the runways are 4000 meters long here at Heathrow. 
So we can vacate most likely Alpha 10 Echo. Okay, good. Um, we are going to use second detent reverse so that we can actually slow the airplane uh, down without heating the brakes too much. Parking down here, terminal to Alpha. And that should be everything that counts for us. Okay. Cool. That's the setup completed. Then let's do a quick approach briefing. We are like 60 miles out from the top of descent, so we've got a little bit of time left. Threats for the arrival, complicated taxi, and depending on what kind of ATC is going to be online at Heathrow, it might be establishing on the final approach. There is often a lot of traffic on Unicom and Heathrow, so we have to coordinate with the other guys and we just have to bring ourselves in line properly for the approach. And I'd say that's pretty much it. Then, for the arrival, we're following the Logan 2 Hotel, which is on the chart over here. So, um, speed max to 50 below 100 unless otherwise authorized. Honor 5 required. Standard routes may be varied by ATC. Aircraft may be instructed direct to with following the radar vectoring. That's what we're familiar with. For descent planning, 250 by Logan, 160 Sabre, 70 Lambourne. That is what we have on here anyway. Warning, do not proceed beyond Lambourne VOR without ATC clearance. Then, um, Logan level 250, thereafter Sabre level 160, let's check those out. Here we go, Logan 250, Sabre at 160, and then we have Brazo, followed by Weasel, max 250 knots, and then Lambourne 220 and level 70, and that is exactly what we have in here. From there we are going to get radar vectors for the ILS approach, runway 27 left, and we have the approach on a chart over here. Looking at the FMC then, I have the standard transition from Lambourne in there, that is just for reference. Most likely we are going to get radar vectors. So the approach itself starts in um, 2500 feet at 7.5 dme, which is the uh, Fox India 27 left. And in here we have Fox India 27 left, 2,500 feet. Three degree glide path that matches and we're going down to a minimum of 277, which is selected as well. In case I missed approach then, we've got lovely uh, London radar vectors over here. So climb straight ahead when passing 1,080 or 0 DME, whichever is later, turn a uh, climbing turn left and track 147 or 2,000. When passing 60 DME London, climb without delay to 3,000, then as directed. Okay, so straight ahead, 1080, then track 147 until 2000. So that looks uh, a little bit different over here. Oh, actually I'm on the chart for runway 27 left. Okay, good thing we checked this stuff. Very good thing we checked this stuff. Okay. And Daniel, nice to see you here. Good catch there, yep. I just noticed as well. Okay, to some right it is. And on this one, we also have the Fafat 7.5, also in 2500. Fox India to some right. And now, of course, looking at this, we have a Fox India to some right as well. Definitely helps if you read your stuff correctly, yep. No idea why the diesel point is located beyond the... Um, Final approach fix, but we'll just ignore that for now. Is there another diesel point anywhere? No. Okay. No idea why it's doing that, but welcome to the Airbus. Um, three degree glide path that matches as well. Minimum is now 278. And in here we now have 278. And um, for the missed approach, now we are looking at straight at 1580, all zero DME, whichever is later, climbing turn right, track 316 to 3000. Okay, so if we have a look at this now, then 1580, then right, 299, it says in here, 3000, and that's versus 316, uh, not quite accurate, so once we start the turn, we have to go on uh, heading select, but that is good enough for me now. On the radios, we take London VUR and progress page, GPS primary, high accuracy, Heathrow runway 27 right. And in here, 
we have a setup for a config 3 landing, transition level 75, 16 minutes of extra time, and in the secondary flight plan, I have runway 27 left in there. For the taxi, we're going to vacate the runway, as said earlier on, via Alpha 10 Echo. And then from Alpha 10 Echo, we are basically going southbound, most likely via Foxjet, or via Echo, Bravo, and then parking down here at Terminal um, 2 Alpha. Okay. So that's the approach briefing. Any questions? No? Very good. Well, there are a couple questions down there in the chat. Well, that looks interesting. And we've got a company message. Let's see what they want. Received messages. Eurowings up. Sense delay call for one minute. Yeah, okay, they really want that. Let's give them that. ADC delay, one minute. Delay allocation card. Yeah, we'll just take incorrect departure time. ODI. And then... Real off block one five zero five cent. Now the company can um, figure that stuff out themselves. And metal eye always blame on ground ops. GSX. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um. Then, Sir Kelt Game is asking, Emmanuel, curious on your thoughts about the statements. I love the Phoenix, but I feel like when I fly the Airbus, I'm managing a computer, but when I fly the 737, I feel like I'm actually flying. Um, honestly, I would not second that. Um, in my opinion, the Airbus flies like any other plane. Um, it is still a plane like any other. Of course, it has a couple more computers in there. But in the 737, you are programming the computer pretty much the same way like you do in the Airbus. And um, Daniel basically brought it down really well there, that the computers are only there to save you. You are still in full control of the plane. You have to be aware of what the plane is doing. And Daniel, you can't say it any better. That is exactly it. And um, yeah, of course, auto trim is a bit of a thing, as you say, Sub-Zero. But, honestly, in the 737, trimming the airplane becomes second nature as well. The, the fact that you don't have to um, trim the Airbus manually doesn't make much of a difference when it comes to, uh, hand, to hand flying. In the 737, you do that on a subconscious level as well. So... No, I would not agree that um, flying the Airbus is more like managing a computer. Um, you manage a computer in the 737 as well. In all of these planes, in all of these modern airliners, well, modern 737, 30 year old, okay, take it at that, but um, in all of these modern airliners, you really have um, computers everywhere. That goes for the 737 just as well as it does for the Airbus. And you know there's that joke that when something goes wrong in the Airbus, you just heard it off and on again. Honestly, whenever something goes wrong in the 737, we always turn it off and on again as well. And then it usually works again. So, um, not that much of a difference there. Okay, I received a company message from operations. Delay code received. Okay, thanks. So, landing at 16.13. What's the scheduled arrival time? How much late are we? Schedule 16.15. Okay. So we're just about to run on time. Well then, quick chat with the passengers and then we can start the descent. Ladies and gentlemen, from the cockpit, your first officer speaking with a quick update on our flight's progress. We're about to start our descent towards London Heathrow, remaining flight time in the region of about 25 minutes. Weather in London is currently typically British. The sky is uh, overcast with clouds, the temperature 8 degrees. 
We'd like to thank you very much for choosing Zero Wings for today's flight. Hope that you have enjoyed it as much as we did, and we look forward to welcoming you again on board of a future flight. Thank you very much for your attention, and see you all again soon. Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, einen schönen guten Tag auf dem Cockpit, Ihr Co-Pilot. Wir starten kurz unseren unsigen Flug nach London. Die Flugzeit jetzt noch 25 Minuten. Das Wetter dort typisch britisch mit einem wolkenverhangenen Himmel und einer Temperatur von 8 Grad. Vielen Dank für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit und wir freuen uns, Sie bald wieder an Bord begrüßen zu dürfen. Hey, one mile to the TD. Let's go. We'll start at level 250 and then we take it from there. All brakes low, by the way, that should give us about 1800 meters of landing runway required. And that should be it. Um, Magoo, I think in the PMBG 737, things like VNAV work even better. In the Phoenix, I have to calculate the TD even more in pre plan compared to the 737. Yeah, Magoo, that is, that is a feeling that I actually share, that in the PMBG, the VNAV works better than in the Phoenix. Especially below flight level 100, I always need to use thrust in order to maintain the speed. But then again, um, Sub-Zero, you said earlier that you fly the real Airbus, do you? Um, could you maybe comment on how the descent performance of the plane should be at flight level 100, 250 knots in idle thrust? The Phoenix gives me something like 2300 to 2500 feet a minute. That seems really excessive to me. To me, it would... I would expect that it should do something like 1,500 to 2,000 feet a minute maximum there, more like 1,500. But maybe that is something that uh, some of the Airbus pilots we have in the um, comments down there can shed a little bit of light on. Okay, entering some clouds, engine anti is on. Okay, we've got a couple aircraft behind us over there. But this guy is not descending, this guy is descending but should be far enough behind us that he's no factor and this guy's not along our route okay so we should be fine and sub zero open descent at 250 below 100 you wouldn't be dropping down that fast you are right okay thank you very much for confirming that And my friend with a Kyrillic name there. Boeing fans just think the Boeing fans think that just because they have a yoke, it's a real plane, and Airbus is fake because it has a joystick. Yeah, in some cases in flight simulation, that is actually quite true. But of course, none of that actually is accurate. Um, you know, regardless if you fly a plane with a joystick or if you fly it with a yoke, it's same, same. You're still flying a plane. Okay, then we'll just take it all the way down from the star, flat all 70 initially. Set. And <laughs> Metal Eye, the guy with the Kyrillic name will always be the guy with the Kyrillic name. <laughs> yeah, seems like it. Okay, passing Logan at level 250, nice, and we're actually leaving some of that, um, of those clouds again, but I'll just keep the anti eyes on for now, especially because the thing is once again flying very slow up here. Is any of that traffic behind closing in? No, not really, okay. Then at least we don't have to worry about the airplane just doing 260 knots over here right now. Uh, Bootwin, your computer is quite powerful, but still sometimes I see stutters. Is this because you are streaming? Do you see performance differences between streaming and not streaming? Um, honestly, Bootwin, the majority of the stutters that I see on the live stream are actually caused by the live streaming and only visible on YouTube, but not on my computer. 
Um, on the pre-recorded, not live streamed videos, you will see that there is a lot less stuttering involved. And um, it's just because my internet is too bad. At the place where I live right now, the internet connection is rather limited, and um, that's the reason why you sometimes see those stutters in the um, live stream. So my apologies for this. Um, in the summer I will be moving to a different place, and hopefully over there I will have better internet available. Okay, clear the clouds, anti is off. And the guy with the Cyrillic name. I need to start practicing from the right seat. Don't know why I'm in, in the captain seat still. Yeah, it is something that I did um, as well when I finally started my pilot training. I mostly started flying from the, the FO seat after that. And now, ever since I did that, you know, I'm mostly changing between the left and right seats from flight to flight. So today the plan is to do the flight from the first officer's seat on the first sector, then the sectors number two and three will be from the captain's seat, and the fourth will be from the FO seat once again. That is what we normally do at my airline as well. The first officer flies the first and the last, and the captain flies the two in the middle. And Sub-Zero, I remember when half of these looks would cost hundreds and hundreds of euros in FSX in add-ons. Oh yes, my friend, I remember that as well. And of course the thing would constantly run out of memory, and regardless of how good of a hardware you would buy, the entire simulator would still become a slideshow. Luckily, in MSFS that is not that much of a problem anymore. So, still nobody behind us. We'll just let it fly that speed then. But I wonder why the... Um, Profile is so inaccurate once again. What's the wind forecast looking like? Passing level 200 at 180, 290 at 40. So that is quite accurate actually. Okay, well. That's. That's why I could really feel the comment earlier when uh, someone said that the VNAV on the PMDG feels better than on the Phoenix. You see it over here, the entire thing just goes too slow all the time, because the Phoenix has more drag than the real Airbus does. And you know what, I'm fed up with these slow speeds. Let's go. Select the speed. Give me 280. That's better. We have a schedule to follow after all. And Yannick, it is the A330. It is the A330, not the 320, that I'm that I will go to. And Magoo, Riva said they basically never use managed descent anyway. Um, yeah, depending on where you fly, the um, operations may change a lot. So. What I know from a couple guys flying for a German airline on the Airbuses is that they use managed descent quite a bit because ATC imposes a lot of restrictions like be level there and there. And um, other guys then tell me that the um, and then other guys um, flying in other parts of the world tell me that they are mostly doing selected descents. The thing at the moment, however, is that selected descent gives you a huge rate of descent. Okay, approaching the clouds again, anti is on, and we'll take the seatbelt signs as well. So, if you just go to idle in the Phoenix and let the thing drop down in idle, the thing has a huge, a huge rate of descent. It seems to me that the um, drag model of the Phoenix just has too much drag at the moment. While, you know, people say that this PMDG 737 has too little drag, which is true to a certain extent, but only a little. You know, and um, what the PMDG lacks in terms of drag is what the Phoenix has too much. But you know, either thing works, so we'll just not be uh, bothered with it. Uh, 
And Sub Zero. We use Managed Descent quite often. And I've never used Managed Descent in Floods, and because otherwise I get Amber Rates of Descents. Yeah. Okay, clear of clouds for now, anti ice off. And then we are almost in London already. Can't see it, but we've just about overflown the coastline. Ah, the guy with the Kyrillic name. My name is Nikolai, but that's not what my username says. Okay, I'm gonna call you Nikolai from now on. If that is fine with you. Okay, gotta start the speed reduction 250 over at a Weasel. Back to manage descent. And Tritic Varma, missing the 737 or are you happy with the Airbus? Honestly, um, in the simulator I don't miss the 737 too much because at least for the next couple of months I'm just, I just see that plane too often if you know what I mean. If you've spent thousands and thousands of hours in it, at some point you aren't gonna miss it anymore. And I actually appreciate the change at the moment and mostly use the 737 in the simulator for when I'm doing live streams or when I am recording videos. And apart from that, I really appreciate the change. Um, the Anton of 225 is something that I really enjoy flying the last days. And then the Airbus is nice as well. Also nice to prepare for the upcoming type rating. So learning a bit of the Airbus logic and stuff like that. And um, for now, for the next couple of months, I'm going to enjoy the 737 while it lasts, and after that, when I eventually go into the Airbus, then um, I'm sure you will see me using the Airbus quite a bit more in my live streams as well. Metal Eye, take out the Concorde next. Uh, it's something I'll look into. And Darth Duck, Aerosoft 330 coming soon. Yep, that is something I really look forward to as well. Okay, 10,000. Let's do the 10 tracks, or the Airbus equivalents to it. Lights going on. Constraints selected on both sides. ILS selected. Um, not going to activate the approach phase quite yet. The Ratnav page is filled out. GPS primary, high accuracy. 10 tracks complete. Then level 70 and 220 knots over at Lambourne. <laughs> and Daniels, I really don't know if I'm going to change the uh, channel name, but it might change in the future, yeah. But that is going to be something that will be long announced, so don't worry if 737 and G-Driver all of a sudden doesn't exist anymore. Um, that is not going to happen. Okay, one guy over there. That seems like he's going into the other direction. Ten, Math 60, can you fly Charlie Gold to Los Angeles later? Well, probably not right now. Um, okay, vertical speed 1000. And you know what, we'll activate the approach phase, then the speed target goes down. Open descent. Okay, so transition level was actually higher than this, so let's go 1003, which probably puts us below 7000. No, just on it. Okay, that's good. So, set altimeter 1003, reading 7000, and that's cross-checked. 
So now comes the funny thing of approaching London. They basically always take you along the um, 270 radial outbound Lambourne and keep you rather high here at uh, 70 and then you'll basically be thrown down really quickly down here when establishing on the ILS. We don't have ATC online except for a tower at the moment, so there will be nobody guiding us down like this, but uh, you can be sure that I'm going to try flying the plane down exactly like that. So I'll try to follow the um, schedule that I would expect here in uh, real life as well. And Nikolai, I live in London and con can confirm this is our weather. Oh yes. This is definitely British weather. I don't have to be in London right now to be able to say that. This is definitely British. Etox 120 in the 737 for the electric overheat warn uh, electric hydraulic overheat warning. What is the procedure to fix it? Um, just go into the QRH and follow the um, procedures described in there. That's really. That's really the uh, simple thing to do. Hey, okay, entering some rain over here. Of course, nothing on the weather radar. Surprise, since we still don't have a decent API. Oh, 27 right it will be. Yep, that looks definitely British. Okay, in the meantime, we can do the approach checklist. Barrel ref, 1003 set. Seatbelts on, minimums 278. Auto brakes, low. Engine mode selector, normal. Approach checklist complete. Uh, Metal Eye, what I don't understand in the Airbus is the uh, tropo value on the init page. Where do I get that? Uh, that's the um, height of the tropo pause, and you should find that in the um, briefing pack in Simbrief. We're going to have a look when we prepare for the next flight. Okay, let's start our descent. Down to 2500. And then let's just go ahead and start the left hand turn over here. Flaps one. Then extend the center line. Might need a bit of speed brake as well to get it down. Insert. Interesting. Why didn't it extend the center line? Well, let's do it from the final fix then. Put the radial in. That looks better. Okay, flaps two. And we'll just maintain the speed for now at 180. Two two five seven short final three point eight nautical mile uh, runway three uh, two seven right. And it looks like ATC just went offline. That is unfortunate. Okay, glide slopes coming alive. That speed brake still out. Yep, I was just about to stow them anyway. Vertical speed, 500. We'll keep the speed at 180 for now. We don't want to. We don't want to turn ourselves into the airway brake over here. 
Okay, ice not detected, but temperature is plus three. I'm going to keep the anti-ice on anyway. to go. Flight Dispatch 320, are you going to park at Terminal 2? Yes, that's the idea. Okay, turn right, heading to 40. And with that we assume to be cleared for the ILS. Go charmed, autopilot 1 and 2. Okay, typical Heathrow speed, 160 until 40 ME. Localizer alive. Localizer star. I was about to say localizer capture. <laughs> Welcome to the 737. Traffic uh, Air France 2257, runway 27, right uh, vacated. Okay, let's do 300 feet a minute. But we should be good too. Here we go, glass up star. 3000 feet set. Cabin crew, please take your seats for landing. Either a traffic, Eurowings 5, Tango Fox, jet established, 8 mile final, 2 7 right. Pilot off. Uh, right, Eurowings 5 Tango Fox, we're doing 160 until 40 UV. Uh, okay, Roma inside. Temperature is 8 degrees on the ground, couple of showers everywhere, as we can easily see, so I'm going to keep the. Um, Anti-ice on for the landing. Sub-Zero. In your airline, what is the policy on the use of autothrottle while manually flying the plane? How do you guys do that? Either a traffic zero one four seven nine 1479 about 10 to the north of the field. The uh, self vectoring to the east for the ILS 27 right. We got both traffic on radar. Okay, four miles out, speed managed, gear down. Ballers armed, flap three. Okay, that actually looks quite good, so let's turn the anti ice back off. 1000. Auto throttle off as well. Okay, that was a little bit chaotic there. Landing checklist, ECAM memo, landing no blue, landing checklist complete.
Regarding glide slope. 40, 30, 20, retard. Oh, that was too high. 10, 5. Why are there still touchdown zone lights while well, there are no more markings? Well, anyway. Okay. Reverse green, D cell. On it, not. 80 knots, manual brakes. Okay, off to the left, over here. And let's see, where are we at? Looks like Alpha 10 Echo as we planned it. Well, that's interesting. That goes quite steep down over here. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Ouch. That did not look nice. Okay, let's get the plane onto the taxiway. Oh no, that Lufthansa is pushing. Okay. Let me go to the left over here, and we just take the next on our right. Well, that wasn't the best on my landings. And it was really interesting that the um, touchdown zone carpet lighting system went much further than the actual touchdown zone markings. I've never seen that before. At least not in real life. And the simulator, well, we'll just let anything counter. Okay, after landing checklist, radar PWS off. After landing checklist complete. Okay, so terminal 2A will take something like. Why is there a baggage cart on the taxiway? I guess I don't even want to know. I guess this is really one of those cases where it's just better when you don't ask any questions. Okay, we landed at 14, so when we have 17 on the watch we can shut down engine number 2. Conserve a little bit of fuel. The right side is clear, the left side is clear. So, oh, stand number 224 sounds good to me. That's going to be a while searching for that. Oh no, that was. Here we go, 224. And request follow me. Well, no thanks. 
Hey, APU is available, handling by Donata, whatever. Electric hydraulic pump on, engine 2 shut down. Oh man, I see quite a couple Euro wings spawning over there. And all of them on the same gate. Uh, taxi light off, APU bleed on. Okay, and we go next to the left, that's gonna be ours. Oh yes, that looks about as busy as Heathrow is. And here we are. Okay, park brake set. APU is available. Shut down. Alpha Bravo, texture ahead, Lima 12, here. Oh, both engines below 20. Beacon off. Transponder off. Parking checklist. Parking breaker trucks, set, engines, off, wing light, off, fuel pumps, off, parking checklist complete. Okay, external power is available, then we can shut the APU down, and that means the trucks are in place as well, parking brake is off. Okay, on block at 20, that is 15 minutes late unfortunately, but we have to live with what we have. Okay then, Se next sector is going to be from the captain seat. What's the... Did she ju just dance up there? So next up, captain seat. And I don't know why there is a different zoom level applied to this. So let's just quickly go into the um, camera settings and bring that into a 70% zoom, which equals the 60% on the FO's view. I don't know why Phoenix does that, but well. They do, and we have to live with it. Okay, so flight number one is done, and that means we have just three to go. Let's go ahead then and go into Simbrief and very quickly compute our next sector. And of course, I cannot hide from my landing, so you are gonna get to see that as well. Okay, so while I quickly compute the flight plan in the back, we have our flight in the overview on Sim Toolkit here, and we've made it initially the uh, noise abatement procedure around the inhabited areas over here, then a pretty direct routing along the coastline, all the way over to London with the standard London arrival routing, then let's view the landing details. and view the full report, please. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. According to Sim Toolkit, we landed just... Well, we landed beyond the aiming point, but well within the touchdown zone. If I compare that to what I saw on my landing, looking outside, I actually landed beyond the touchdown zone. So why is there a difference? Anyway, that looks alright. Vertical speed, 34 feet a minute. Okay, that is definitely much too soft. The passengers would not have noticed that landing, but that is much too soft. You shouldn't do that. In any case, I'm happy I didn't impact the ground, so... Um, well, we're gonna take it from there, and I would say 
Overall, that was an interesting landing. Okay, let's go ahead then with the next sector. Show me my saved flights, and we want to go from Heathrow to Dusseldorf. OFP number two, that looks good. View that. Edit. And generate. Okay, that looks good. And pre-file. On Batson. Uh, somebody else is using my call sign once again. What did I tell you would happen? Let's see, can we lock on? Seven, Papa Yankee. Nope, call sign in use. I told you somebody would be using our call signs for the entire day. Okay, then let's see what else do we have there. Flights, departures, Heathrow, towards Düsseldorf. We start with the first one. Two Echo Foxtrot. Let's see if we can lock in with that. Nope, calls on in use. Okay. Next one then, that's the one we had previously, let's try this. 1-4 November Romeo, let's see if that is available. Yes it is, okay, so we'll be the Eurowings 1-4 November Romeo then. Added flight, we'll quickly update the flight plan with that. And generate. And Daniel, uh, we'll go back to Dusseldorf and then we'll fly on to Copenhagen. That is the idea for today. Four sectors. Okay, so pre-file flight. Okay, flight plan filed. That's all we need. Okay, so the first officer would be heading out for the walk around now, of course, and in the meantime we can start setting up our airplane. Ah, oh, you, you guys can dismiss this for now. Doublet, will you, please? Finally. Import next flight. Okay, scheduled off block in nine minutes. That's probably not going to happen, but we'll see. Then, quick look into the weather over here, seeing what we have. Import the latest. Okay, level 330, and that routing looks good. Weather forecast, destination Düsseldorf, showers in the vicinity, few TCUs, and, well, that's only at midnight where they get a little bit of weather, so I would say that's looking good. And the alternate Dortmund is looking good as well, so don't see reason to take extra fuel here. So they say 4.3, make that 4.5. Maybe 4.6 with a tiny bit of delay at the holding point. So 4.6 is what we'll take. Hey, okay, load aircraft, fast time. Thank you very much, and off we go. What do we have there? Preliminary load sheet. Arrival message. On blocks at 19. Okay. So on blocks at 19. I planned 20 minutes for the turnaround. That means we leave. We need to leave at 39 in order to be considered on time. The rest of the delay we can simply blame on the late inbound flight then.
So that's what we are going to do today. And Martin, yes, I do realize that my last name is showing in Simbrief. Um, something that I will just have to accept when I want to use the website, and uh, I do want to use it. But um, thanks for pointing me to it. But yeah. There are other ways to figure it out as well. Which doesn't mean that I have to, um, you know, tell everybody, but it's all right. So, if they have landing runway 27 right, that means departure is going to be on runway 27 left. <laughs> and Sub-Zero, 20-minute turnaround in Heathrow, gets popcorn. Yep. <laughs> well, honestly, that's what I always feel like when my airline plans 25 minutes turnaround pretty much anywhere in the world. But, uh, yeah, you know that. You know how that works. So we'll plan for 2 3 right for now. And let's see, we should have a piece up transition somewhere over here. Here it is, piece up 2 3. Insert. So, get me the route into Navigraph, please. Here you go, yes, confirm. Taxi chart, parking stands. That should be all we need. Archer, Brookman's Park. Okay, straight ahead, 3D New London, right turn in Mount Burnham, and then a right turn to Children. So how are we going to do that? London 1, Burnham 2, Children 1. London is good. Burr on 2 and CHT on 1. And then Brookman's Park can go on number um, 2, BPK. Finally, some radials as well. That's going to be 053 inbound and thereafter 064. So 064 on the right, 053 on the left, but that's only going to be for reference. Come on. U7 uh, left, we're going to depart from. We'll do that thing later, and for the engine outs, we'll simply go straight ahead, 25 miles. Holding over there, 269, and 3000 feet is basically going to keep us safe all around London. Immediate return to London if we have to, onto the ILS approach, 27 right, no star, no transition, very good. Then let's initialize the weights, and we had a preliminary load sheet earlier on, so let's go ahead and use that. Also have a telex over here, connected to VATSIM as one for November Romeo, that's fine. Load sheet, 56.5. And what do we have? 30.2. So for the fuel, we plan 4.6. We have that on board already. And with the fuel loaded, belts on, pumps on. Okay, so take off weight with that 60.2. 8, 60.9, close enough, accept the lid. And this is what I meant earlier on regarding the um, alternate fuel. If you tell the Fe if you don't tell the Phoenix an alternate fuel, whatever the time, it always calculates 200 kilos. That just can't be correct. I mean, if we look at what Simbrief calculates for the diversion, then um, over here we have alternate fuel 900 kilos. So, I don't want to know why the Phoenix thinks it can do a 17-minute diversion with just 200 kilos of fuel. That is nonsense, if you ask me. 
Okay, extra minus 0.5, that's because we have the entire approach transition in there. I'm going to accept that for now. Um, I know that that is going to change and root. Another Phoenix thing. And Nikolai, what a question. Um, if you could get your dream job at your favorite airline flying your favorite plane, but you had to delete your YouTube channel and never use flight sim again, would you do it? I honestly tell you, yes, absolutely. Um, YouTube is nice and such, but um, if I could get my dream job at my dream airline flying my dream plane, yeah, uh, sorry, but I would probably never want to use my simulator then anyway. Okay, flaps 2 down from point 1, 68 degrees. And then we have takeoff speeds, boarding complete, very nice, 32, 32, 35. Okay, noise abatement 2, so let's take slash 1200, oh sorry, it should be a 1077 actually. Here we go. Jakob, what is my dream airliner? Uh, that's a good question, honestly. Um, I would say, for now, maybe the A350. A350 is a good looking plane, the cockpit looks uh, very ergonomic and looks just very user friendly. It's got a good range, you're going to see some uh, very cool destinations with it. I would say, with these arguments in mind, I would go for the Airbus 350. Okay then, they are closing all the doors, that looks good to me. Then, number two radio on 1 to 1 1.5, number one is going to be 1 to 2.8. We'll use the left transponder. Okay, before they remove the trucks, brake set. What's the temperatures? Yeah, 75. Okay, no problem. Okay, um, departure briefing then. I don't see any threats for this one, so um, let's go ahead. We are parking in stand 224. That's going to be a pushback with a nose to the right hand side. Onto taxiway Bravo, and then we'll taxi via Bravo. Probably hold short Locky, but might just about continue as well. Then taxi chart. Anything from November 3 is fine for our departure. And the takeoff itself is going to be a flap 2 takeoff, slight down trim at 0.1 units, and uh, 62 degrees flex time, 32, 32, 35, and that is using wet speeds already. Our departure, Brookman's Park 7 Golf departure, is going to be straight ahead, right turn, onto 297 inbound to Burnham. So we're going to use the left ADF for this. No, actually it's going to be VOR1 ADF2 to set up. So we have London VOR and uh, Burnham NDB. And then looking at the routing that we're going to fly. This is pretty much what we have. And then we continue 40 me London, 60 me London, then a right turn turn 053 and cross radial 205 between 4 and 6000. Okay, so in here we have um, 305 hotel point, that's 8 miles, it's above 4000, and interesting, it only says above 4000 in here. Well, it's got the 6000 at uh, children, so that's good enough. And from there on we continue towards Brookman's Park, maintaining 6000. We're probably going to clear ourselves up higher earlier on, but that is good for me anyway. Warning, due to interaction with other routes, do not climb above 6,000 until cleared the ATC. Another warning, no turns below 590 feet. Okay, that's both good enough for me. And um, with that, I think we are good to go. Um, yeah. Rock speed. Um, how do I zoom in the cockpit? Um, 
I've disabled the um, zooming by scrolling the mouse wheel, otherwise I would zoom too much when scrolling on the, the autopilot panels. So I've assigned separate buttons on my um, on my mouse that I'm using to zoom. Okay, starting the APU. And Metal Eye. Um, private jets, honestly, could be fun, but it can also be a lot of waiting with eventually nothing happening. Or it could just be flying at the worst times you can imagine. So I'm not sure about private jets. Sure enough, if if I had the opportunity to go to net jets, it would certainly be something that I um, would have considered. But um, there are a lot of not so good private jet operators as well. Anyway, we've got a schedule to meet. Let's do the cockpit preparation checklist. Gear pins and covers removed. Fuel quantity 4,600 kilograms. ADIRS. Uh, sorry, seatbelts on. ADIRS. Nav. And barrel rev. 1003 reading 0. Cockpit preparation checklist complete. Then let's get GSX. Prepare for pushback and departure. There is no ATC online. We don't need de icing. Okay, they still have one cargo door open over there. Let's see what's the story behind this. Let me close this, please. Thank you. And then APU available. Park and brake is set. So ground power and shocks can be removed. Okay, I would say we are pretty much good to go. Um. Then there's an Air Berlin on the left there. If that Air Berlin is in the live stream, um, at what time will you be ready for pushback? Because when I start pushing now, I'm going to block you. Okay, apart from that, um, let's say hello to the passengers. Ladies and gentlemen, very good day from the cockpit. This is your captain speaking. My name is Emanuel. In the name of Eurowings, welcome aboard our flight to Düsseldorf. Flight time today is in the region of about 55 minutes with a smooth flight at 33,000 feet. We would like to thank you very much for joining. Wish you a nice day on board. And if there is anything we can do for you to make your flight more enjoyable, please do not hesitate to ask any of our cabin crew. Once again, thank you very much for your attention and welcome aboard. Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, einen schönen guten Tag aus dem Cockpit. Hier spricht Ihr Kapitän. Mein Name ist Emanuel und im Namen der Eurowings darf ich Sie ganz herzlich an Bord unseres Fluges nach Düsseldorf begrüßen. Flugzeit heute etwa 55 Minuten. Wir rechnen mit einem ruhigen Flug und einer pünktlichen Ankunft. Und wir möchten Sie jetzt um Ihre volle Aufmerksamkeit für die Sicherheitsdemonstration bitten. Das dient nicht nur Ihrer eigenen Sicherheit, sondern auch der Sicherheit der Passagiere um Sie herum. Vielen Dank für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit. Okay, that's ready, that's ready. Then I would say we are good to go. Uh, there is no ATC online, but there is an aircraft pushing behind us. Okay, so we've got to wait for him anyway. So let's see, the delay until 41 is going to be on um, late inbound, and then the rest of it is going to go on uh, ramp congestion. Okay, um, yeah, so I'd say we need to wait until the guy behind is clear. Well, or we are just going to push with the nose to the left side and then taxi out on Alpha. That might work as well. Yeah, you know what? That's what we're going to do. Then we don't have to wait here for so long. So, continue pushback. No de-icing. Nose left please e4 start checklist park brake set takeoff speed thrust 32 32 35 thrust uh, 62 windows 
closed beacon on checks complete. Heathrow traffic, Eurowings, 1 for November Romeo, pushing back with the nose to the left there. Okay, break off. The low fuel warning here is noted. Um, we are aware of that, as briefed earlier on. And the load sheet is in compliance, accept, thank you. Off we go. Off block 43, that means two minutes of delay on ramp congestion. The remainder is going to go on... Um, the remainder is going to go on to... Uh-oh. The 737 is pushing as well. But if I'm going with the nose to the left now, to enable pushback on this guy... Oh, that is gonna get expensive. If I need to guess, he selected the nose to the right. Okay, we're gonna stop the pushback here, and then we'll just taxi out to the left manually. Stop here, please. And the other guy just stopped as well. Well, at least like that, we're not breaking any metal. Okay, starting number two. And there should be sufficient space for that guy to pass onto Alpha. Yeah, like that we can get out. Okay. Well, that was some interesting pushbacks, but we've managed the situation quite all right, I would say. And we did not scrap any metal. And Sub-Zero, is GSX good then? I've never had it in FS2020. Well, honestly, not so much. Um, if, you, if you've got a freeware tool that you can use for pushback, I would recommend to use that. And um, for the rest of it, GSX is just not that good. Okay, starting engine number one. Company message. What are they sending us now? Please go back on stand, you forgot some passengers? Zero wings ops. They want a delay code. Yeah, you're gonna get that en route. I'm not gonna bother with it now and delay the flight even further for you guys. Okay, two good starts, clear disconnect, clear signal, right, have a good day. Flight controls, full up, full down, neutral, full left, full right, neutral, and the rudders, left, right, neutral. Okay then. After start checklist, anti-ice, engine anti-ice on, ecom status checked, pitch trim, 29% set, rudder trim neutral, complete. Okay then. Heathrow traffic, your rooms, 1 for November only, check the holding point, runway 27 left via Alpha. Okay, brake track. Pressure zero. Keep our traffic. You're wing two echo box. Taxing one way two seven left following the you're wing there bus. Keep our traffic. Be on the right. Be on the left. And let's turn down the brightness of the ESB a little bit. It's nicer. Okay, the 7.3 is also rolling. Uh, 
Flap MCDU disagree. We've entered a flap 2 takeoff. Did we really calculate flap 2 or did I just do a typo there? Nope, should be flaps 2. Okay. Good thing we do this. And here we go, that's better. Takeoff config checked. Okay, takeoff review. This is gonna be a lefty takeoff from a 27 left flaps 2 noise abatement. Procedure 2 at 62 degrees flex temp, speeds 132, 132, 135, and the sit is going pretty much with an immediate right hand turn and climb the 6,000 feet initially. Thereafter, we'll have a good look on the TCAS, make sure that we're not interfering with anybody, and that should be it. Any questions? No? Okay, taxi checklist. Flight controls checked, flap setting, config 2, radar and PWS on and auto uh, engine mode selector normal eca memo take off no blue before takeoff checks complete okay we'll go one further and then we'll take that intersection left is clear ether traffic euro wings one for november romeo line up and take off from a two seven left Looks like we've caught a good time for the departure here, with pretty much no other traffic around us. Oh, look at that, we're gonna fall down the runway again. Lovely terrain elevation buck here. And down we go. No further comment on that. Okay, lineup checklist. Takeoff runway, 27 left identified. TCAS, Tara, strobe line, uh, sorry, packs off for takeoff checks complete. Timing. Take off. Lining up runway 2 And flight 5-2 SL runway auto thrust blue. Take off thrust set indications normal. Keep your trust your knots. V1 rotate. You're up, the freight. Now. Nah. Time thrust set. Warning, North ADC transponder standby. Okay, we're going to check on that later. Lab one. Oh, that one's on standby. Okay. You turn on the transponder and immediately uh, you end up in a resolution advisory. Okay, flap zero. Give me some packs as well. Clear of conflict. Why is it banking? Okay, that was a little bit of a mess departure there. Why did we lose our nav mode? Well, you know what? Traffic, traffic. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Flight director's off. Auto throttle off, give me climb thrust, please. I'm just going to some basic modes here. In order to avoid the traffic.
Why are the flight directors back on? I just switched them off. And what is that guy behind us doing? I have a feeling somebody is trying to troll us here. Okay, anyway, we'll continue the climb. We're going to ignore this guy for now. Transponder back off. And then we've got to deal with a couple of those messages that we've just got. Okay, there's one important there. Air conditioning pack 2 off. Gonna switch that on. Let's done that. Now let's bring the plane in on Charlie Hotel Tango. Okay, disregard that for now. So let's clean up a little bit now. Direct 2, Charlie Hotel Tango, insert. Cancel those warnings initially. Auto throttle. Auto pilot. Okay, why don't. Why doesn't it give me climb thrust? Here we go. That's better. Okay then. Select the climb. Then, um, what else do we have? We can do the 10 checks later on. Let's see first of all what was wrong here. Recall. Okay, transponder standby. Let's switch that active You're again. No and looks like the other guy is gone now. Okay. That's something at least. Then, is there anything else there? Recall. Okay, all normal. Good, then let's go ahead and do the ten checks. The packs are on, anti eyes can stay on for now. We no longer need the constraints. That's good enough. Uh, yeah, we don't need any of that Ratnav stuff here as well anymore. So that can go as well. Secondary active, 330 plan, 370 optimum. That's good enough for me. Okay. So let's go all the way to 330. Engine anti eyes can go off, seatbelts re will remain on. And with that, we've got the flight fully under control again, so now let's revamp what actually just happened. Um, so, what's just happened? Uh, we departed 2.7 left. I noticed that I did not hear anything on Unicom, because my headset actually turned itself off automatically. So... If you guys heard anything on Unicom, you heard more than I did, because my headset turned itself off. So I couldn't hear any, uniform, any Unicom calls. Um, apart from that, the moment we turned the transponder on, there was an aircraft pretty much exactly where we were. That could not have come from our runway, that must have been from the parallel runway. We had a departure going northbound, so if that guy was on a go-around, then maybe he... Um, Maybe he was from 27 right and did a go around. Okay, Stormy says in the comments, don't think I heard anyone departing 27 right. Yeah. Can we see anything on um, Vatspy? If there was any traffic over there? No, there is no traffic shown there at all on Vatsby. So where did that aircraft come from? I have no idea. Engine anti is on. Or might that actually have been a bug with a Phoenix? Can we recreate that? Let's try. Transponder off. 
and Honda Auto. But there is no aircraft showing. Okay, well, that leaves me with a single conclusion that some troll was watching the live stream, locked on on 27 right, took off at the same time, and then tried to chase us in order to cause a little bit of havoc. Um, yeah, that is my best... That's my best explanation there, really. Because I can't see any traffic now, so whoever it was has probably locked off the network. So, I would guess that was some sort of a troll. And, uh... I'm gonna let it down at that. And Sub-Zero, so an actual RA, nice. Does your Phoenix not have auto TCAS? Um... This is what we have on the Phoenix, and it's got the auto mode. But I had selected it to standby on the ground, because that can mess with the transponder mode Charlie. So I left that switch in a standby accidentally for the takeoff. And basically the moment I turned this on, or rather I turned this from standby into auto, was the moment where we got the uh, TCAS. So no idea if that might have been a bug showing an aircraft that just wasn't there on Vatsim, or if that was a troll. But that's my two theories right now, how I could explain this. And Magu, yep, I just rewind it. Samrock 176 Echo called on Unicom 27 left short final. Okay. But I... yeah, of course. Well, did we have him on TCAS? Because I believe we had the um, TCAS message, the um, TA only, showing on the ND, so we should have seen him, shouldn't we? And Jacob just went back. Shamrock called short final 27 left as you entered the runway. Ah, okay, that might of course explain the trouble then. So all in all, the thing came back to my headset shutting itself down automatically, because it doesn't give me any voice alert when the thing goes off. Um, Okay, in Flight Dispatch 320, Shamrock landed, though. And Critic Varma. The Shamrock was on a 3-mile final. That distance is normal for Heathrow. Yeah, indeed. With the traffic on a 3-mile final, you can still depart. If you are fast. Okay, so... If it wasn't the Shamrock going around, but if it was the Shamrock going around, he should have turned left according to the standard missed approach, but we initially did a right-hand turn to avoid that guy because I saw him a little bit to the left on the TCAS. So we did a right-hand turn and it seemed like he followed us until I switched the TCAS back off. Or rather my transponder entirely. So, the Shamrock can't be the explanation. Well, I don't know. I don't know. And Skyflyer Dan, maybe the troll hy hypothesis is correct then. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, Sub Zero, um, on the iPad settings, there's a feature for auto TCAS or not. A lot of newer 320s have it. Those switches being on standby would only affect your visibility to intruders. Okay, let's have a quick look there, at that. If this plane has auto TCAS fitted. I guess that is... Yeah, Auto TCAS is fitted to this plane, Sub-Zero. So we should have had Auto TCAS available on here. Do I assume correctly then that it should have shown us any um, other traffic anyway? And that only our transponder was turned off, but we should still have been visible to others? And... Oh, no, sorry. 
not we should be visible to others, but others should be visible to us, of course, that way around. Well, in that case, I don't really have any explanation, except for the troll hypothesis, or for a bug in the um, aircraft. That could, of course, also be. And Sub-Zero, yes, it will show traffic, but no information on its traje trajectory. Okay, perfect, yeah. Just a 2D dot. Well, we did have altitude information on that guy, I believe. So, no idea. And AJ Fernery has Chinese spy balloons. Yeah, that's probably the best. That's probably the best theory. And Carl Ball, it was a KLM 737 going from Heathrow to Amsterdam. Checked on Vatscope when you got your TGAS alert. He was showing on top of you on the SID. Looks like he's locked off now. Okay. Thank you, Carl. Um, so that's probably the, um, that's probably what actually happened then. But that guy did not report any takeoff, did he? Because surely there was nobody on 27 left. Maybe somebody took off on 27 right. Anyway, let's not hang up on that. We are above the clouds, anti-ice can go off, and seatbelts off as well. So, how far do we have? 130 miles to the top of descent. Nice. So we can relax a little bit. And Vincenta asked earlier on, hey there 737G driver, are or were you an actual Eurowings pilot? No. And we have one to go. A quick fuel check then as we reach the top of climb. Should be 16 minutes and we should have 2.8 tons on board. 16 minutes looks like it will be correct and we have a little bit of extra fuel. That matches and makes sense. Mark all star. Vincente, did I ever fly an A320 or just the 737? For now it's just the 73. Um, Airbus coming soon. Okay, level off, 3.2 tons. Perfect, so you have controls and I'll do the setup for our landing at Düsseldorf. ATIS is online. What do they have? Expect ILS approach 23 left. Romney is in use 23 left. Transition 70. Okay, that looks quite good. So it's going to be a Romney 23 left. And they have a departure online as well. That is very good. The 23 left. PSAS 23 transition. Insert. Fix info. Düsseldorf 23 left. With a 10 mile ring, please. Of a missed approach, we need DOS, DOS, LMA, and BOT. Two, three left, looks good. Transition 70, they said. And what else? 220 at 12. 5 degrees 1004. Minimum should be 338, config 3 landing. And I'll deselect the glide slope mode over here. 
for Düsseldorf because that's only going to cause us troubles. Nikolai, because you're a simmer, you will ha probably have a great head start for your type rating. I really hope so as well. Certainly, if it's if the Abbas is in any way similar to the 737 back in the day when I did my 737 type rating, having the PMDG experience, and if the if the Phoenix is similarly good, then I'm sure that it will be similarly easy as well. Okay, so Düsseldorf, two, three, left, should be a dry runway, we'll take the latest Metar. A little bit of mathematics, 2.1 on board, so that means we burn one ton, so 58.5 is going to be our landing weight. 58.5, low order brake, idle reverse, manual thrust, flaps 3, 2099, and actually we can't do that. Can we do it with flap full? Yes. Okay, then it's gonna be flap full landing. Okay. Okay, and let's take a little shortcut over here. What kind of ATC is online? They have an approach controller, okay. Then we can easily take a direct towards Tebro, that is the border of the airspace. For the beam points, please insert. Um, Kritik Varma, what? How do you calculate the actual landing weight? What formula did you just use? Um, basically, I just used the destination fuel on board, 2.2, and then I took the current fuel on board, which at that time was 3.2. So the difference is one ton. And then I just looked at the drove weight on the lower right of the ECAM and I subtracted one ton from that. Okay, so let's get a couple charts. These up two three transition. That looks like what we need. Come on. Why can't I? Oh boy, lovely simulator. Here we go. And then ILS two three left. Okay, ready for the approach briefing? Threats for the arrival, to be honest, I don't really see any on there. So, let's go into the, um... So let's go into that briefing, and in the meantime, um... Looking at a couple of the uh, comments down there, um... Sam, do real pilots really do this much flight a day? That's impressive. Honestly, Sam, we even do longer flights. So, in my airline, we often do four two-hour flights a day. We might go to uh, Palma de Mallorca and back, and then, which is two hours twenty from my home base, and then we might still do a flight to Kaunas and back or to Riga, especially to Riga, which is another two hours twenty and back, and that adds up at like eleven hours fifty duty time. So yes, lovely four sector days. Sub zero, you name it, four sector day, just kill you. Okay, so let's go ahead with the approach briefing then. Um, looking at the arrival, we have the piece up to three transition, which is piece up below flight level 170. And if you look at that stuff on the plan page up here, that's what we have. And from there on, we proceed via Ajida towards Xamot at 220 knots. We have that in here. Thereafter, we have a lovely Arnav transition, so we are just going to disregard that for now. Um, prior to Metma, let me put Delta Lima 455 in because I wouldn't be surprised if we actually get a direct to go there. Okay, so we have Delta Lima 455, then Metma, 
Out of Metma, we start the ILS approach, runway 23 left, which we've got on a chart over here. In 3000 feet, 3 degree glide path. And we have the altitude check at 5.4 miles, 1850. In here we have the Fox India, 1850, 3 degree glide. Missed approach is going to take us straight at 2.6 me Düsseldorf, turn right on track 309 towards Lima NDB. So we've got Düsseldorf 3 and then 304 until crossing radial 009 from Mönchengladbach and then turn right track 060 inbound Lima and uh, outbound Lima to Bottrop climbing 4000. So we've got 09 point Bottrop 4000. That makes sense. For the radio setup, Düsseldorf in both sides, Lima and Bottrop. So initially we're going to use VOR2 ADF1 for this one VOR2 ADF1 a GPS primary high accuracy for the landing itself we are going to do a flat full landing minimum 338 and approach speed 132 looking at the landing calculation we have a factored landing distance 2211 over here with an LDA of 2400 so we can't do a config free landing on this so um that's what we have. Okay, um, yeah, for the landing we're gonna vacate the runway to the left and I'm aiming for either Lima 6 or Lima 7 depending on where we touch down. Yeah, that's the chart I want. So either Lima 6 or Lima 7 coming down over here and then we'll go most likely somewhere to the Alpha terminal or maybe we get an outside position on the Victors as well. Both is possible, so we'll just see where they direct us to. Any questions? No? Very good. Okay, Daniel, you fly to Riga. How is the weather treating you there? I've always had tricky approaches when landing there. Um, honestly, when going to a Riga, I've mostly had good weather conditions. Um, it, it's been a little bit gusty at times. And I've took one photo inbound there where we've been flying through pretty much the only gap in the squall line that was available over there, which is a really nice photo. Um, apart from that, however, not too much um, to report about the weather there. I've had a couple cases um, going there in the snowstorm, and I've had one case in the last winter season where we went into Riga while it was still good weather and then while we've been on the ground down there we have actually and uh, it started snowing and the next day that famous video of the air baltic airbus 220 skidding off the runway in that very same snow was recorded so we've just about been there when it started snowing um but apart from that they are really good down there in riga so um there's not a lot to report there actually and sub zero seven three seven driver, you want to treat us with an NPA or raw data ILS, maybe? Yeah, let's do the raw data ILS. That sounds good to me. Let's do the raw data ILS. And Felix, what would be the absolute uh, freak landing distance? So, optimal weather, full brakes, full reverse. Would it be possible to land at a 1,100 meter runway? Um, if you touch down exactly on the uh, runway threshold, then it would pos then it would be possible on a 1,100 meter runway. But the the brakes would get hot. The brakes would get really hot. And Adrian, uh, favorite airport and destinations? Um, hard to tell, really. I like the Canary Islands. I like Palermo. I like Corfu. Yeah, maybe Corfu. The approach there is just so nice. But Palermo is good as well. If only it wasn't for the ATC and the slots down there. But that's for a different point. And Vicente, what's a raw data ILS? Uh, that basically means to turn off the flight directors and fly everything um, based on the raw navigation data you get shown on your uh, displays.
And Sub Zero, Arnav into Zero Five at Madeira, Chef's Kiss. Yeah, unfortunately, um, my airline flies there, but not from my home base, so I've never been to Madeira. I've um, only taken those airports in account just now that we actually um, fly to ourselves. And Vincente, of course, a raw data ILS is flown without the autopilot, otherwise it would be boring, wouldn't it? So, we've got a company message. They're probably still looking for the delay codes. But let's see, Eurowings Ops, send ADC delay for 8 minutes. Okay, we had um, four minutes late inbound, and then we'll do the re remaining four on ramp congestion. So, ADC delay, four minutes and four minutes. Then let's have a look, delay allocation card. Where is late inbound on this one? Yep, delay of inbound flight, that's OAD. And then the other four minutes, ramp congestion. I would say we put that on ATC startup delay, AMZ. Then let's write something down. On block. We've been there at 1619. And then four minutes. Stand by for pushback. Okay, send. With that, the delay should be explained. Felix, have I ever been to Lisbon as a pilot? Love the approach from runway 02 over the city. Yes, I have. And Lisbon is actually really nice as well. The only thing why I don't like it that much is because my airline usually combines it with a, with a flight to Stansted after that. So, you do 3 hours to Lisbon, 3 hours back, and then they make you fly a standstill after that, which is another hour 20 per way. Sub Zero, our SOPs say you have to fly manually if raw data ILSing. Because the flight directors are off, you can't use fully managed modes, and we aren't allowed to use selected modes, but I guess that's operator dependent. Yeah, in my airline, of course on the 737, we would not even be allowed to fly raw data ILS at all. We have to keep the flight directors on. And um, I guess that pretty much rules it out anyway. So we only fly raw data in the simulator, really. And, well, that's what it is. And Sam, is there a specific reason you don't announce which airline you work for? Yeah, the reason is that my airline is not really social media friendly and they don't want um, their pilots to basically do anything in social media that relates to the airline and that has the potential to shine a bad light on them. Now, for the airline it is of course really hard to uh, see in advance what might shine a bad light and that is why basically it's um, pretty much all forbidden to um, announce that kind of stuff. So yeah, um, you know, to be fair enough, there have been a couple cases where some blokes post in the cockpit with like, well, I don't even know how to say this. You know, they post in the cockpit with a rubber banana or something the likes and they push the thrust levers with that and filmed themselves while doing that of course the plane was on the ground and in cold and dark conditions at that time but you know they nonetheless made it to the title page of a british boulevard newspaper with that saying that airline xyz pilots are doing this stuff with 180 passengers on board and blah 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 and you know with that kind of pr I can totally understand why they just um, 
why they pulled the plug and said, guys, that's it with social media. And that's the reason why I'm not announcing the airline that I'm working for. It could just potentially bring me in trouble and there wouldn't be any real benefit on the uh, channel. And Critic Vana, what's happening? Check the navigation display on other planes on T-Cars. Yeah, there's a couple guys around. Not really surprising at this time of the day. And one guy was moving up and down. Yeah, that stuff happens on Vatsim from time to time when um, aircraft are being spawned around you. Okay, so time to start our descent. Let's start at flight level 170 initially. And down we go. Company message, Eurowings Ops, ADC received. Okay. All right. So we've started the descent. I'm quickly use the. Um, I'm quickly going to use that moment in order to um, visit the uh, lavatory. And then I'll see you again in 30 seconds. Alright, I'm back and just in time it seems, as we've just received a contact me from the Düsseldorf approach controller. So, back in here, shut that door, and then 128.55. Let's see what ages we have. Delta. I'm ready, hello, Eurowings 14 November Romeo, descending flight level 170, inbound Tebro, information Delta. Fork 1000, Eurowings 14 November Romeo. Direct to Bottrop, expect ILS to left and December level 120. Direct Bottrop, expect ILS to left, descent level 120, Eurowings 14 November Romeo. Okay, to Bottrop. So let's quickly put that in somewhere. Insert, direct. What's it doing there? What the hell? It's just deleted my flight plan. Okay. Do we receive bot up already on the ADF? Yes, we do. Then... Adding select. And look at that! Just deleted my flight plan. Okay. Then let's go into selected for now. And before I forget it, Sir Kelt Gaming, thank you very much for the $9.99 donation. Thank you so much for your videos. Watching them has made it... 
so I can really handle the 737 really well. I consider this payment for flight lessons. <laughs> Thank you very much, my friend. Okay, um... Yeah, so let's go ahead and re-enter that arrival. Hello? Destination? What is it doing now? Can we do it on here? Departure? Why on earth? I think we've messed something up. Okay, new destination. Düsseldorf. Insert. Now we can insert a transition. Wire bot drop, insert. Direct to bot. Insert. Okay, that looks better. But this is not the bot drop transition. Okay, the FMS is seriously messing up right now. And Andrew, yeah, just copy secondary. Might do that as well, but I've just re-entered it, so that works as well. And entering some clouds, engine NTI is on, fast models on. Sometimes I really don't understand why Flight Simulator add-ons are acting up. I've entered a waypoint that was on my missed approach path somewhere along the flight plan earlier on, and that just basically sequenced everything all the way to the end of the missed approach. I'm fairly sure that that's... Four wings one for November Romeo, descent 3000 Set. 3000 check. Set altimeter 1004. Passing 18,000, is only 3,000 of flex stamp by set. How high are we? 5,000 feet. Okay. Then give it some speed break. Uh, Cideral, hello, thank you for tuning in. Um, we are flying four sectors today, so we're going... Düsseldorf, Heathrow, Düsseldorf, Copenhagen, Düsseldorf. And sub zero, lol, raw data ILS, not raw data roots. This is some 1950s flying now. Yeah, it is indeed. But now we first of all got to try to get the airplane down. Why do we get a, a sub zero? Is it normal that we get the amber speed brake warning here right now? We are in an open descent, and I've got the speed brakes out. But why do we get the amber indication over there? Doesn't make sense to me. Hey, okay. NTI is off. Approach you let me just have to four fully accept this island. Let's just have to four feet and tower one one Manage the speed, let's get it down. Hey, 10,000. Constraints, LS. Speed limit exceeded. Yep, we are reducing. Okay, enough aids look good. GPS primary, high accuracy. Okay, let's go manual. Ok, 
Okay, speed break is back in. Approach checklist. Barrel ref. One zero zero four set. Seat belts and, uh, on minimums. Hey, my minimums are gone as well. Zero. Uh, that FMC really fucked itself. Three three eight. The rest of it is still there. Okay. Oh, wings one for November Romeo. Right heading two hundred. Clear to LS, One for left. I found I last two three left, all wings one for November Romeo. Okay, flat rack they're going off. Bird on. Okay, heading 200. Continue the approach checklist. Minimums 338 set, order brake, low engine mode selector, normal. E210 greater Euro Wings 1 for November Romeo. Okay, 16 miles out and we don't receive a glide slope yet, that is strange. But we're approaching the VNAV profile, that's gonna be good enough for our purposes. And here we go. Glide. We've got a glide slope. Speed 210 or more, yeah. Okay, we can do that. Runway is inside up front. Okay, we've got to start speed reduction now, otherwise it's not going to work anymore. Localizer alive. Flaps one. All wings one for November Romeo, we are reducing speed. One for November Romeo, Roger, one seventy or greater until five miles. Tower one one eight three schön up. One seventy or greater until five, one one eight is three, or wings one for November Romeo, back like ebenso. Okay, runway track 232 is set. Mr. Pro Charge to 4000 is in. Okay, that altitude is checked. Where is the master caution button? Here it is. Sort of tower low, Eurowings 1 for November Romeo, ILS 2 3 left, 170 until 5. Hallo Eurowings 1 for November Romeo, bin 2 0 degrees, 1 for 2 3 left, Kittleland. 2 3 left, Kittleland, Eurowings 1 for November Romeo. Okay, just resetting the altitude once more to get rid of the amber warning on the altitude over there. Now we've got landing clearance so the lights can come on. Hallo, 
So we are familiar with the incorrect ILS threshold crossing height here, so on short final we are going to go all visual. Flaps 2. You're down. Flap three. Flap full. Landing checklist, ECA memo, landing no blue, landing checklist complete. Alpha, are you ready? We are ready, 38 Alpha. 38 Alpha, roger, behind the landing, Eurowings, 320, short final, 2-3 left, line up, 2-3 left, behind. Line up, 2-3 left, behind, TG-38 Alpha. Yeah, just confirm, behind the landing, Eurowings, 320. 300. Okay, now I'm going to go below the glide slope because this would bring us in too high. During Stryker Foxtrot, hello, your number 2 departure will be in between, with check 220 degrees for bonus. Continue. And the puppy is incorrect here as well. I'm going to ignore that as well. 15, 40, 30, 20, restart. Lovely Phoenix didn't let me flare with a full aft stick. Okay. Reverse. Auto brake just disconnected itself. Okay, auto brake low again. Okay, 70. Manual brakes. Führung 001, Taxi Holding Point, Runway 2, Trailer, Feuer Lima 5, Mike, Lima 1. Feuer Lima 5, Mike, Lima 1, Jerez 001. 001, korrekt, den Tollshot auf Mike. Nicht Lima, Shot auf Mike, Jerez 001. Führung 1, November Romeo, Turn right, Mike. Right, Mike, auch übrigens 1, November Romeo. Easy, Trier, da ist er, wenn 2, 2, 0 degrees, 1, 1, 0, 2, 3, left, clear for takeoff, tschüss. Okay, clear on the right. 2, 3, left, easy, 3, off. Eurowings 1 for November Romeo, Papa 2, get Alpha 1-5. Papa 2, Alpha 1-5, Eurowings 1 for November Romeo. Hey, Papa 2 is the second on the left, and Alpha 1-5 is almost at the end. Okay, so we are on the ground. Gate Alpha 15, let's enter that in GSX already. Follow me, no thanks. Hunting by AHS. Hello, you're going 7 Tango Lima, number 2. Roger. 
after landing checklist, radar and PWS off, after landing checklist complete. Yeah, regarding the landing, I have the feeling that when I'm landing the Phoenix Airbus, you basically always need to pre-flare a little bit at 50 feet to break that rate of descent. If you would use normal rate of descent until about 25 feet where you would normally start the flare, the airplane would um, just not allow you to flare at all anymore. Because I just did that and I raised my uh, side stick all the way to the uh, full aft position and you saw how the nose barely came up at all. So um, the Phoenix definitely got some buck over there. Okay, approaching the gate. Lights off. And I think I've still got the strobe light on. Yes, I do. Okay, that's A320 on the guidance system there. Why ever the bloody thing is in feet and not in meters. And stop. Okay, here we are. So, APU is still starting. Shutdown number two. I definitely should have started the APU a little bit earlier. Actually, I thought I did, but then I got busy with other stuff and, um, well. Doesn't matter, here we are. APU avail. Shut down. Okay, below 20%, ground power is available, APU can go off, and the parking checklist, please. Doing Stryker Fox, Fort Hold Road of Mike and contact 1 to 1, decimal 6, bye bye. So, parking checklists, uh, parking record trucks, set, engines, off, wing light, off, fuel pumps, off, parking checklist complete. Alright, that is number two two out of four done and yeah i'm not gonna show you that landing rate i can tell you already 513 feet a minute so that that would be in the region of the passengers would definitely complain and not a hard landing as in something that would require an inspection or something but uh nothing that you would want to do on a normal flight but yeah that um I don't know, that Phoenix logic is just a little bit um, problematic. And Skyflyer done, what hardware do I use when flying the uh, Phoenix? I'm using the um, Thrustmaster Warthog together with the Honeycomb Bravo for this. So let's go ahead with the next sector. This one's going to be flown from the captain's seat again and then we'll go back to the FO seat at the end. So, safe flights, and then we've got to use Dusseldorf to Copenhagen in the latest version. View that, please. And it's gonna be... What's the call sign gonna be on this? 8 November. Hey, finally a call sign is available when I lock in. Okay, so quickly gonna edit this and dispatch it once again, just to be sure that we are on the latest version and that my SimBrief actually um, is exporting that thing to the aircraft. Okay, pre-file on VATSIM. Pre-file flight. All right, great, so that's our Simbrief stuff done. And Nago, what is the maximum touchdown speed before an aircraft needs to be inspected at landing? Uh, we can't define that in, in vertical speed. Um, we need to look at the G loading there. And I would say anything from about 2G onwards is problematic. Now, if I need to put that into... If I really need to put that into... Um, feet a minute, I would say something in the region 700, 800. 
that is where it really gets problematic. Okay, next flight scheduled in 13 minutes. Let's get the latest flight plan. And we've arrived four minutes late, by the way. So, weather in Copenhagen, no clouds, and from 2200 onwards we're getting some gusts, but we are landing long before that, so don't expect any gusts over there. And looking at the alternates, they arrive at 2000 with a bit of rain and snow, yeah, that's not so good, so let's just take 15 minutes extra for the alternate. So that means 600 on top plus the taxi fuel, so if we take 6.1 tons, we should be good to go. Yeah, 6.1 should definitely be alright. Cool. So, mass and balance. Still deboarding, but almost finished. I'm just gonna wait for that, otherwise I will definitely forget about it. Here we go. Okay, 6.1, load aircraft, fast time, and you may start, my friend. At the same time, FO can go out, do the walk around. So, ATSU, AOC menu received messages. Telex, relates. That was the contact me from earlier on. Arrival message on block at 44, so we've got 4 minutes of delay, which means the new estimated off block time is 18.04. That is in 15 minutes from now. We should be well pass well capable of doing that. And the load sheet we'll deal with later. Okay, requests. Then Eurowings, what are we? Euro wings. Where's the call sign in the Lufthansa layout? Where do I find that call sign? Needs to be somewhere in there. Ah, oh, yeah, 8 November, okay. Exactly where my mouse was. No comment on that. So, Euro wings 8 November, cost index 20, flight level 350, as far as I saw that. Request weather. Departure, Düsseldorf, 2-3 left, and we're gonna do Mabel 3 Tango. Here it is. Perfect. Arrival, Copenhagen, 2-2 two, two left. And we're coming in from Monarch. Monarch 3 Charlie. That does not sound familiar, but they have 3 Alpha and 3 Charlie. For now, we'll just take what the... Um, what Simbrief has planned, and in the air we are then going to check again. So that leads us towards Adobe. Do we have an Adobe transition? No. Okay. But Adobe sounds somewhat familiar. We'll just take it as it is right now, and then we can still change that as we need. Okay, Delta Yankee, Dusseldorf, 2, 3, left. Secondary, copy, then we had the PBD01, we created that earlier, here we go, and thereafter Lima Mike Alpha, this becomes an overfly point, holding over there, 232, inbound right turns, kilometer 3000 feet, that's going to keep us safe, and then, nope, from here, new destination, Dusseldorf. Arrival, ILS, probably going to be 2-3 right by now. No star, no via. Okay. Then, for the... Uh, Dead Derpy asking, will PMDG release an EFB for the 737? <laughs> yes, I just can't tell you when. Okay, another Telex. Okay, fair enough. So, load sheet, 59.7. And what do we have here? Um, 31.4. Fuel, we said we're gonna load up 6.1. 
and for the diversion 1.6 yeah I don't know how it wants to fly 22 minutes with just 300 kilos of fuel that's bollocks we're gonna do it like this Okay, so Düsseldorf, runway 23 left, it is dry, synchronize, synchronize, and we'll take intersection Lima 3 data, because who knows what it might be good for. Flaps 2, down trim point 3, 57 degrees. 2 slash 0 0.3 down and 57 degrees okay it speeds 363638 and with that the fmc is done okay quick check for the rest of the cockpit fuel 6.1 is loaded Pack flow into normal, expecting 160 passengers. 5000 is the initial climb. Resetting the timers. Okay, that looks good. Then, um, let's go ahead with the departure briefing. Um, I don't really see any threats for this one. Airplane is good, weather is good, no no terms. Düsseldorf to Copenhagen, Eurowings 8 November, cost index 20, flight level 350. Then let's have a look at the charts. I believe I didn't prepare any so far. No, I didn't. Okay. And what do we have over here? The Mabel 3 Tango Departure. Okay. So we're parking on Alpha 15, that's in here. Push back most likely into the apron, then taxi out either Papa 3 or Papa 4, Mike, and we take Lima 3 figures once again. The takeoff itself is calculated using a flap 2 takeoff, down trim point 3, 57 degrees flex temperature, speeds 136, 136, 138, noise abatement procedure number 2. Um, the departure, Mabel 3 Tango departure, we contact uh, departure control 121.355 when passing 2000, speed max 250 below 100. So, routing, Mabel 3 Tango, Delta Lima 230 above 600 feet. So, let's see this over here. We've got Delta Lima 230 above 600, then Delta Lima 235. And that's got a speed restriction up there of um, maximum 190 knots. Thereafter, Delta Lima 248. And then we proceed towards Aircom, Luzix, and Mavel. And in here we have Aircom, Luzix, Mavel. Okay, that's it. Any questions? Probably not very good. Then let's go ahead and do the cockpit preparation checklist. Gear pins and covers removed, fuel quantity 6,100 kilograms, seat belts on, ADIRS, NAV, Barrel Rev 1004 set, cockpit preparation checklist complete. Okay, let's go ahead and request our IFR clearance. Yeah, preliminary load sheet can be accepted. ATC request, pre-departure clearance, station Düsseldorf, gate Alpha 15, and we have ATIS information. Echo. And that call time is definitely... N uh, oh, okay. I think I forgot something. Flight in it, request. Yeah, that was still on the old flight from Heathrow. The call sign was not showing correctly. And the city pair wasn't showing correctly as well, of course. 
So, 8 November, Düsseldorf, Copenhagen, that's correct now. So, ATC request, PDC, Düsseldorf, Copenhagen, Eurowings, 8 November, Info Echo, Alpha 15, send to Düsseldorf. Okay, send. Then, let's go ahead and start the APU, as we are almost ready. And I just saw the boarding complete message here as well. Where is it? Yeah, passengers and cargo are on board. So let's say hello to the passengers. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening from the Flytek. This is your captain speaking. My name is Emmanuel. In the name of Eurowings, I would like to welcome you aboard our flight to Copenhagen. Flight time today is about 1 hour and 10 minutes. We expect a smooth flight at 35,000 feet. For now, sit back, relax and enjoy the flight with us. If there is anything we can do for you to make it more comfortable, please don't hesitate to ask any of our cabin crew. The cabin crew will shortly point out the safety features on board this Airbus A320 aircraft. I would like to ask you to pay your full attention, as that is not just for your own safety, but also for the safety of the passengers sitting around you. Once again, thank you very much for your attention and welcome aboard this Eurowings flight. Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, einen wunderschönen guten Tag an Bord. Mein Name ist Emanuel Hang und ich bin heute Ihr Kapitän auf diesem Eurowings-Flug nach Kopenhagen. Flugzeit heute etwa eine Stunde 10 in 35.000 Fuß bei einem weitestgehend ruhigen Flug. Wir möchten uns an der Stelle schon einmal herzlich bedanken, dass Sie heute unsere Gäste sind. Lehnen Sie sich zurück und genießen Sie den Flug mit uns. Die Kabinenbesatzung wird in Kürze die Sicherheitsanweisungen demonstrieren. Wir bitten Sie um Ihre volle Aufmerksamkeit. Okay, so... Pre-DC request received, stand by. And we've got a second message there as well. And here is the PDC. Okay, Eurowings 8 November, clear to Copenhagen of runway 23 left via Mabel 3 Tango departure. Climb to 5,000 feet, squawk 2051. Next frequency 121775, information echo, request start up on 121775. Wilco. Send. Then let's get GSX to start preparing our pushback. We don't need any de-icing over here. Okay, so that stuff is send and one to one seven five five. Uh, seven seven five. Alright, they've still got a cabin door open, but the jetway is disconnected already. Very interesting. Well, that's better. Okay, APU is available. Park and brake is set. Equipment can be removed. So, 121775, let's go. And we've got the company message. Um, I actually did not copy your second part, sorry. That's PDC request received, okay. And clearance confirmed. Close. So we just need the final load sheet. But I'm just going to force thank the Phoenix to send that one now. Yeah. Resend, um, thank you. And here we go. Load sheet, uh, in compliance with five, edition number two. Five, okay, five accept. Years. Then we don't five need to do anything five, anymore. Five, and that's done. Okay, let's get our clearance. Oh no, no, more guys going for startup before us. Oryx Confirm that was climb six thousand five hundred. Um, Sub Zero, CPDLC works with Watson and Ival. Copy, climb by ASC at 5,000 feet. We're cleared to uh, Budapest via the Dodi 9 Tango departure. And can we get the squad code one more time? Oh god, this is taking so long. 
Go for one for holding. Uh, just enable that 4,000. One for holding. 1,000, copy. Düsseldorf Delivery, hallo, Eurowings 8, November, Alpha 15 with PDC, re fully ready. Um, first, OX 914, you read back what's great, keep on ready for startup, break, break. Still station calling for startup, stay in, call sign only. Eurowings 8, November. Four. Two stations at once. Eurowings 8, November with PDC, startup and push. During 8, November, startup to push. For pushback, content call, 1216. That approved, 1216, Eurowings 8 November, ciao. Alright, hello, Eurowings 8 November, Alpha 15, request pushback. Hello, Eurowings 8 November, traffic guide, playback, traffic. Ciao. Okay, so, we are ready at 04, that is exactly the uh, planned 20 minute turnaround. So, um, where is the traffic behind? Ah, oh, the inbound, I guess. So, if we get pushed back after that, I would say we are pretty well set up for the flight. Uh, Lucas G, can we expect the 777 in the first half of 2023? I have no idea. Eugene, anyone knows any special clients to use CPDLC on the PMDG 737? Yes, um, easy CPDLC. That's an external client, but it works really well. Okay, the look from the goes into the gate next to us. So hopefully we're gonna get our clearance now. Oh, we say November push start approved, facing east between Papa 2 and 3. Confirm that is on Tango? Correct, that is on Tango. Roger. Okay, continue push. No de-icing. Then, facing southwest on Tango. Oh, wings are 8 November. We can do push by facing southwest on Tango. Is that good enough? Yeah, that is fine for me. I'll drop. Okay, so beacon is on before start checklist, park and brake, set, takeoff speeds and thrust, 36, 36, 38, and flex 57, windows, closed, beacon on, before start checks complete, park and brake released. That's off block at 05, one minute delay on ramp congestion. Okay, the pushback is going to be a little bit longer now, so um, we'll just about see what GSX is going to do with the push, and then we'll decide. Um, facing southwest on Chengo, I guess he's probably going to push us up here with a nose facing somewhere down there. So pushback like this. Well, we're going to see about it. Or they might push us over here. That could happen as well. It's a little bit unfortunate that GSX is so limited with the. Um, pushbacks. I've already got an additional file installed here, but in real life, um, you know, there are hundreds of pushback options and um, things are quite a bit easier. Of course, when ATC gives you pushback clearance here and you first of all need to construct everything using that GSX editor, that is not really good as well. So, yeah. We'll just have to see where we are going to go and then we'll start the engines accordingly. Metal eye, also the radiation from the weather radar, most similar, forget to turn off, yeah! <laughs> Good evening, ground, uh, Sub Zero, rest in peace ground crew, left his lights on right to the end. Yeah, that Lufthansa going in over there. <laughs> okay, how is he pushing us? That derpy, can you open a window? Yes, you can, but I'm not going to do it now, because chances are I will forget to close it properly, and then we'll have a decompression, and I don't quite want that to happen. Oh, 
And Yannis, would you ever ask ATC to clarify if the clearance is not the yellow from the egg? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, if you are not 100% sure about a clearance, you would immediately tell them um, to clarify. Don't just assume any clearance. That's how accidents happen. Okay, we should be good to start our engines now. So let's see. Everything's done. Okay, start engine number two. A little bit bright for my taste. 4824, are you ready? Uh, 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We have a good engine start. You can disconnect. Glider CDN, most if not, not all planes, tie the weather radar into the weight and wheel sensor to prevent activation on the ground. Yeah, greetings from the 737. That one definitely doesn't. Okay, starting number one. Even though it's not in the AFCOM, I've made it my personal check. Um, when we're turning on the gate, I always check the weather radar. Okay, the starter is off. 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 Okay, the Full right, neutral, radars, left, right, and neutral, after start checklist. Anti-ice, off, ECAM status, is checked, pitch trim, 30% set, radar trim neutral, after start checks complete. Eurowings 8 November, request taxi. Eurowings 8 November, taxi to report runway to the left via Papa 3, Mike and Lieber 1. Exit one point two three left. Papa three. Mike Lima one. Our wings eight November. Okay, that's straight at right, right. Yeah, ask the tower please. What would I just be? Bye bye. One more. And off we go. Brake check. Pressure zero. Clear left. One guy coming there, he's probably going to overtake us, I guess. But let's see. ATC will have the final call on this. But seeing how fast he goes, we'll definitely be number two behind him. Oh, we say November, company traffic on mic. I was actually we give way to you. Oh, we say November, Roger, we are number one on mic. Okay, very nice. Sure about that stuff. Yo. So let's see if that guy is stopping for us. But he is very nice. Vielen Dank, Eurowings. Danke. Okay, off we go. So this time the TCAS is definitely turned on. Takeoff confirmation. Left seat takeoff on May 2, 3 left. Flaps 2, noise abatement procedure 2. And we have takeoff speeds 36, 36, 38 at 57 degrees flex temperature. Straight at um, Delta Lima 230, right hand turn out. Initially, speed limit 190, that's